Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I don't know if they are around. My dear friend told me he was going to be here. Dr. Lucas Atlong from Joss. Is he here? Oh, he's there. God bless you. And then his friend, Dr. John. Am I right? God bless you. Please thank you. Let's honor them. Wonderful, wonderful men of God. The medical doctors also. Thank you, sir, for coming. The Lord increase you in the name of Jesus Christ prophesy to yourself and say I receive understanding say it again I receive understanding turn it into prayer Lord grant me great understanding tonight understanding the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding unto the simple Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight I'm going to be touching on a number of things and then we'll pray. Um, as I have traveled, especially in recent times, I have, I have been humbled, let me tell you sincerely, at, at the prophetic words that the Lord spoke to me many years ago. I have seen it in regions, campuses, and I am truly humbled to see that when God speaks, um, He is reliable. It pays to trust Him. It may not look like it, but if you trust Him, He will surprise you. Hallelujah. And I was sharing, I think, with our dear School of Ministry students yesterday during the lectures, and I was telling them that one of my personal goals in this life is to inspire my generation to love God to seek him and to be revealers of his possibilities this is my inspiration to my generation I hope that one day a generation will look at my life and be inspired to love God to seek him and not just to stop there that their lives will become portraits of the possibilities that a man can demonstrate if and when he's one with God. Are we together now? And so all the teachings that we bring here are an attempt, a contribution, you can call it, to open us up and help build that we rise to that point where we not only know God, but we understand his ways. It's, it's very arrogant for me to have to be the one saying this, but let me tell you sincerely, I love and I care about every one of you from the depth of my heart. It, it shouldn't be me saying it, but I say it because it's the truth. It matters to me that your knowledge of God is rich. It matters to me that your conformity to the fullness of all that he is and he represents is rich in your life. It matters to me also that you gain intelligence spiritually 
that you come to a point where your life is furnished with thorough understanding you are not unfruitful in the knowledge of the truth you can know god as a person and still be unfruitful in the knowledge of the systems of the kingdom you hear me say this i will keep repeating it until it becomes your convictions because the operation of god on earth in as much as the bible has revealed to us is systemic are we together god is the god of systems when you encounter his person then he grants you the ability to understand his ways his methodology his systems the results that we seek are dependent on our comprehension and engaging of the systems accordingly are we together so on one hand we are coming into the knowledge of God intimacy here and there but then we must understand his ways listen let me tell you this our destinies the quality of our destinies on earth not only depend on the love of God for us but our ability to understand his ways of doing things are we together now to be able to replicate his reality in our environment that's the whole idea of kingdom come it's not a mystery is to be able to sustain the ability to make your life become an expression in every area every area remember there's a scripture we've been playing around with very recently the bible says second peter chapter 1 and verse 3 it says according as verse 2 says grace and peace be multiplied to you you know through the knowledge of him of our god and of our lord jesus christ verse 3 says according as his divine power hath given us how many things all things that pertain unto what apostle peter would have just stopped and said his divine power hath given us all things that would have been enough but he says those all things are divided into two categories the matters that pertain unto life and the matters that pertain unto godliness everyone say after me life godliness say one more time life godliness there are matters that pertain unto godliness for instance your spiritual growth right the the issues of the spirit when i open you up to the dimensions of the spirit the anointing understanding the ways of god digging into the boils of the spirit to be able to come up with the things that help you to conform better to become a spiritual man these are the things that pertain unto godliness but there are things that pertain unto life the well-being of your children matters that pertain unto life is that true the ability to not be under the yoke of this godless system that has designed a structure to strangle any intention to be serious with God there is a system intentionally built that's what is captured in the mystery Babylon a system that was built with intelligence intended to frustrate any desire to be serious with God and so the system operates in many ways by making men busy by making men poor by making men mediocre by making them frustrated to lack a sense of purpose that those who are not of the world will continue to pay tribute in cash and in kind with their time and with their lives but there is a bailout system and the bible says they are matters that pertain unto life no matter how anointed you are when you watch your child being driven out of school it will frustrate your Christian experience now I have said it again and again we do not serve God just because of tea and bread listen very carefully we don't serve God because of the things that he gives us we serve him because of who he is and our love for him but he has so designed in his wisdom that in serving him you encounter other things the ability to attend to the matters of life because in doing so you demonstrate that he is a good father number two in doing so you demonstrate dominion number three in doing so it affords you the time to further commit yourself are we together there is a conspiracy it's always been there but it's been reinforced again 
this system of satan occupying men their time their life to never allow them serve god do you know why many of the people we call god's generals were powerful they gave god time that is the commodity that satan is fighting today in our generation time you never know anything without giving it time you meet a fulani man he can whisper something to his cows and they will behave themselves because he spends time with them you don't wake up and come one morning and tell a cow move left these are animals our time with god is under attack hear me carefully our time with god that is the principal factor that sponsors our knowledge of him is under serious attack and if a generation does not stand up to say satan what are you doing our children you see these little kids running up and down they will no longer have time for god there is a system that is derailing men away and is doing it in a very subtle way it's not happening overnight you check the schedules of the average man there is nothing about god there aside from one religious devotion that is done in 10 minutes god is not you can't give god 10 minutes of your time and want to host his glory you come back to sleep you are tired and it's not like you were doing anything kingdom satan system he manipulates men like he's playing a chess something is wrong brothers and sisters this is i'm starting tonight with a clarion call something is wrong our generation really needs to seek the Lord but not under the conditions that the devil has put us in you're not going to seek the Lord when your rent is about killing you you will just dance around and give thanks but not to seek the Lord it's amazing how we have to sit down and specially create time for God we don't specially create time for money we are seeking it all our lives. We don't specially create time for fame. We don't specially create time for a living. But when it comes to God, there has to be an extra effort. It says, as for me and my house, it didn't say we'll be Christians. We will serve. It's a commitment. As for, it was not saying as for a pastor who is now into this burden called ministry. Say, as for me and my house. I have made a decision that I will serve the Lord. Our generation is under serious threat. Look how hard the devil has made it for an average young man to be established. Even at age 40, he has not even started establishment. If he's to live 80 years, that's half of his life gone. And don't forget that when he's 60, 70, his strength may not be there again. And the Bible says that we should serve God in the days of our youth. So he rubbishes the days of our youth so that we spend our entire life looking for what to eat, what to drink, trying to educate our minds, trying to earn a living. And then we give him some little time, devotions here, one program, one emotional crusade here. We will never. It's impossible to institutionalize God to a generation that way. If we want our children and our children's children to serve the Lord, let me tell you, we must make God a big deal in our generation. Not a factor you add to your life if you are a Christian, but the basis of your living. I'm concerned especially about our teenagers. Most of them don't know God again. Ask them, when we were teenagers, one young man who is not even serious just a sunday school goer can recite 30 verses it doesn't matter whether he loves god or not but you ask one of these are young ones to recite even john 3 16. that unbelievers who were passing around church knew you ask them and hear what they will tell him but ask them what is the latest app the latest computer game huh the latest uh, what do we call it all these funny things they are not wrong in themselves but something is happening to a generation if we don't pay attention we will cry in old age and say lord did i fail my generation 
These are my contemplations. The level of non-attention to God is becoming a thing of concern. We are going to churches. Sundays, churches are full with members. Wednesday, activity. I'm talking of seeking the Lord. Not as a profession for a man of God where he gets salary at the end of the month. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Most people who serve the Lord is because they have given up on the matters of life. There is no hope of sending any child to school. There is no hope of anything. They know they will die whether or not they serve the Lord. So they say, okay, since I have two years left, let me just try to do something. No. Our generation has brought an option. Be poor and fail and serve the Lord or be blessed and be occupied trying to make a living. Who gave us that option? As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. That one day I will come to your house on a weekday and hear sounds of worship from your gate. Not cassette. You and your four children are serving the Lord. And I say by two o'clock, I thought you should be earning a living. And you say he showed me another system. Now we are serving the Lord. And visitors pull their mouth while they are languishing in the squalor of rebellion. And watch you. Say Pastor Alpha, you are serving the Lord. Jedediah is 12 years and his teenager friends are there all around smoking their destinies away and this child is there serving the Lord. It is selfishness and wickedness that makes us to forget the generation that is coming. I'm sorry to say it and I, I love our parents. We have many of our elderly people here. I love them but one of the mistakes that our fathers made was they were very selfish they did not remember that a generation was coming so all they did was to educate their minds and look for food to eat there's hardly any heritage given to a young man every young man starts almost from ground zero spiritually financially the time a young man should use building his spirit is fighting warfare because the chains that have held him at 30 he must spend one year contending for victory as for me and my house i can't claim it for everybody but as for me and my house we will serve the lord how many of us here got born again directly by our parents how many of you some of us were just around and salvation by the mercy of god met you in one sunday school some of you salvation met you at the point of death did you know that for many of us, we never had the talk about God. We had godliness in a religious way. Every time there was Bible study, something happened. A sound in the zinc, demotion that was imminent, or something that sponsored some emotional reaction. Say, as for me, and my house. Say, as for me, and my house. I will serve the Lord. Are we together? Yes. It matters that we make this decision right now. That we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. I've been doing a lot of counseling lately. Especially for our dear ones that are getting married. And I look at them. My first concern is will your home serve the Lord? Will your life serve the Lord? Let me tell you. There is a wicked Babylonian financial system there that was designed to make sure you don't serve the Lord. How can one man do five jobs because he's trying to pay rent? It's a cost. You wake up by six, do a job to twelve, and Satan makes sure a stipend comes from there. And then you start another one till four. And your body is weak, but you know if you don't do this, you will not eat well and you start another one and in the next five years that man dies and leaves seven children look at our dear mothers I, something is wrong go listen to me i came tonight to talk to you from the depth of my heart it's a vow i've built myself that's the truth 
you bail yourself through a commitment of obedience but my job is to share this with you that if we don't wake up and join ignorant people or this proud religiosity that only focuses on the matters of godliness and leaves the matters of life one day you will stand and watch you will be a mighty man of god with a big parish and your wife and you will watch your children with pity letter come and stand before you we've been expelled not because we smoked not because we drank because the means to make it happen was not there you will be in a church and the owner will come and lock the church while service is going on and drive you out as for me and my house everything that must be put in place in my life to allow me serve God I will put in place if you can make that commitment tonight we have achieved something so far he says the things that pertain unto life and godliness and those things the equipping comes through knowledge 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 there is no shortcut to greatness there is no shortcut to glory sacrifice has always been the non-negotiable condition the sacrifice of your commitment your life your resources your attention you may not have the best of, of atmosphere and environment, but there is a determination that superimposes those things. For the sake of my generation, I will present Jesus. Are we blessed? The things that pertain unto life and godliness. There are some of us, and it really grieves my heart. As young as we are, condition as we call it has taken away our focus from god there are some of us here early 20s yet you have to be sending something home god is calling you into ministry but the focus is not there the moment he's speaking here comes the bills here comes the whatever and you know that your poor aged mother who couldn't go to school our fathers many of them largely disobedient and proud people although they don't have any result you see that and they yoke all of that the average home right now has many relatives waiting for their elder brother to marry because he's the one who will continue the education for them if all you see is poverty you are not seeing well you must see an attack on a generation if all you see is sickness you are not seeing well you must see an attack look at the long-term effect of that a day will come our men will no longer go to church because they have to work all day on sunday to add to it it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow so by the time the father is not there to raise the child the devil positions somebody who is now employed who now teaches that child is it, whether the father is a pastor or a bishop is not the issue look at the children of men of god This is a cry and a burden that is boiling in my heart. We must redeem not only ourselves, but redeem a generation. We must start thinking transgenerationally. Don't say you are too young. If the entire scope of your life is just me, my marriage, my home, my this, no, you must start thinking. You see that? When Koinonia started, this young boy seated here was in the loins of prophecy. Today, he's now hearing. You will be surprised. One day now, this small boy you see will be going to secondary school. One day, he will be writing jam. And you will open your eyes and see that I made a mistake I cannot correct again. Many of us seated here, the reason why our lives are delayed is because we have to pay the price that was made by our parents before we start building our own lives you've not even started building your own life yet you are paying a debt you know nothing about then when you are 50 and have paid then you now start your own life it's an attack listen to me very carefully it's an attack an attack on the integrity of god an attack on a generation that can seek god 
all these revelations that we dish out in the body of Christ will soon become useless if we ignore these things because there will be nobody to hear them again all the dimensions of heavens and the stars and the constellations we would talk to ourselves as men of God on stage while everybody runs around everywhere trying to make a living make a living is a cause there are many of our parents is in their deathbed they will confess that I was called to be a prophet to my generation called to be a prophet they would have been at the dimension of Benihim today imagine how many destinies would have been changed if they answered the call but they were hijacked and they only see the visions in their parlor God shows them global events and they are there no grace and influence to effect it you read about these generals some of them can hold one year of prayer you know sometimes men of God hold prayer meetings is it not those who have eaten that will come if I hold a prayer meeting five days in a week pastor alpha you are a lecturer except God grants you grace should you can't be effective you are only effective when you have options and that's what Satan wants to make sure a whole generation does not have no option no option there is an attack on our generation we must open our eyes and see it this is not just the issue of money this is not the issue of influence this is the issue of the destiny of a generation the prophetic destiny the prophets labored in the Bible and prophesied about our generation and they died not seeing this now we have come in the scene and many of us are just playing games with our lives doing the same old things that brought pain to us so that our own children will cry I want to serve the Lord not because I'm a preacher I want to serve the Lord because my life was meant to be a revelation of his glory I want to serve the Lord I want to be the one to coach my children not Sunday school son sit down let me teach you the Bible not police station teach my child how to live not a rehab center teach your child or daughter how to live is God speaking to us tonight I'm challenging you there is a serious burden in my heart if we do not arise for our generation let me tell you very soon you will be laboring on your child and the lawless children of another person who is not listening to what I'm saying will be there to become the strongholds. We not only must care about our children, we must care about our generation. One child, 90% of our children are influenced to be bad. They are not bad on their own. You are laboring to train them. There is another godless man somewhere and they all meet in the same place. And Cain dominates Abel and make our children feel sorry for being christians you look at many of us here you are looking at me now look how ashamed you are if you are in the social sphere now you are in church you are jumping but once you are there are you drinking no i don't drink are you this no you and they look at you oh, what a child this guy his eyes have no and you feel so guilty for loving god and being attention and paying attention to him it's like the in thing now is rebellion you are a man to the degree to which you are stubborn lawless rebellious and proud that's what we are marketing to a generation that is the portrait of a superhero that our children are learning if you must be a superhero be rebellious be a bully be everything but a christian the average young child is not interested in church again again you invite them find out how many teenagers come for koinonia you'll be surprised there are young people there are old people but the teenagers don't come it's not because it's night they stroll around and then go around and do a lot of things and satan comes he wants to capture that generation but in the name of jesus christ there are people who will say no way there are people who will create a spiritual barricade 
that as the priest of my home no way satan there is no entrance huh that gentleman who was talking about aleko or whatever it is look at now that a time will come your child will be saying mommy we are from benway but what is that you say i settled it already don't worry it was well settled that that discussion just one day i will tell you about the story that once upon a time in our village people don't reach 30 but i stood as an altar and i settled it are we together And one of the deceptions, let me begin to build my discussion tonight now. One of the deceptions that I think God is granting me grace to connect tonight is what I call the danger of imbalance. Write it down. The danger, the catastrophic danger of imbalance. It not only matters that we communicate truth. It matters that the truth we communicate must be the whole counsel of God. Everybody say the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God is a definition of all his intention. Everything he desires for a people within a time period to know about him represents the whole counsel of God for that dispensation and one of the things that you see satan playing out right now is an attempt to use religion as a tool that sponsors imbalance in our quest seeing then that he cannot stop us from having an appetite for god he now begins to sell imbalance to believers and let me tell you something brothers and sisters imbalance is as dangerous as falsehood imbalance is as dangerous as a lie let's examine a few things before i talk about imbalance i shared one time about three great errors that the lord revealed to me in the body of christ if you remember when we were talking about the body of christ let me do a quick recap that the lord began to reveal to me that there were three great errors in the body of Christ. The first error is found in 1st Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. 1st Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. He said the spirit speaketh expressly. The spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. We're examining the first error now. Giving heed to seducing spirits and then the doctrine of devils. Everyone say the doctrine of devils. Another word for this is apostasy. Apostasy, a deviation from God's known pattern of operation. Apostasy. The first error that the body of Christ has to contend with is the error of apostasy. Listen to my message, the apostate church. Apostasy, a deviation from the truth and also a deviation from God's pattern. Two things there. A deviation from the truth is called apostasy but a deviation from the pattern of communicating that truth is also apostasy even if the information is correct but the spiritual system of transferring it is wrong it is still apostasy are we together in God's dealings with men both the information and the pattern are important not just the information don't just say the most important thing is that I'm healed. The most important thing is that I prosper. The most important thing is that I get anointed. No, sir, there is a predefined pattern. When God looks at you and you are doing business with God, what you got is not as important as how it came. Don't just say I was anointed. Don't just say I was prosperous. Don't just say I, I got married. Don't just say I had a child. God is obsessed with patterns that if you must host his glory then there must be a formation that must be according to pattern apostasy I teach that there are two dimensions to apostasy number one the communicator of the message himself not being of God 
that's the first dimension where they whether as a man of god as a businessman whoever attempting to communicate anything the plan from the beginning was deception intrinsically the communicator himself is of the devil there is such a possibility in the body of christ and in our environment not just apostate informations apostate people people who are not they were never never of god from the first place are we blessed and then number two the people the communicators of those truths may be genuine but the information they are communicating is a doctrine of demons you can be genuine sincere let me take ministry as a case study you can be a sincere man of god you love god you are not fake but the content of your communication is a doctrine that is not sponsored by the spirit of christ the bible says that some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and then doctrines of demons I can be a genuine man of God, genuinely anointed by God, but because of a system the Bible calls seduction. Are we together now? I can deviate from God's way of doing things and now become a communicator. I am not fake, but my message is not genuine. Both of these cases can be classified as apostasy. So that's the first error. The second error that I teach is the error of individualism also the error of indifference write it down indifference what we call i don't care attitude right individualism we don't think kingdom we don't think generational we think me so if a jimmy's leg is having a problem provided it has not affected me is none of my business this is where many many men of God many many of we pastors Pentecostals especially have missed it we have missed it big time in this area we are so individual individualistic we don't care about what is happening to the body provided my church provided my life is immune for it, from it to hell with the body are we together yeah so if the danger has not come to meet me it doesn't matter if an armed robber comes to steal in a pastor's church nearby it was not my church it was not my member my kingdom financier was not robbed so pastor may god bless you if someone dies provided he's not a member of my church it's amazing how we leaders mentor people to deliberately select being in the body is not enough you must be associated with me to be able to enjoy certain benevolence that is meant for the body it's a poisonous spirit the error of indifference the error of individualism when god begins to build his army his system of operation is that he takes us beyond individualism and connects us as an organism if your leg is having pains your head can pain you because of the leg is that true um we're returning back from Kano, and we stopped at a filling station to get fuel and one guy was marketing a funny product you know these guys that market something at the filling station and he said um there's a the drug or the lotion whatever it is is for teeth <laughs> but you rub it on your leg <laughs> yes he said you don't have to rub the thing on your teeth you just rub it on your leg now that, that's a body consciousness at least i didn't buy it but he taught me that the leg is related to the teeth because we have been taught to apply drugs only where it hurts and leave other parts and he said no no let me show you another formula you can apply it in the leg but it can touch the teeth that means i can pray from zaria and god can preserve kenneth copeland because it is the body i can hear that there is an attack on a man of god and not say after all they don't listen say no no lord this whatever it is 
he's part of the body his integrity is our integrity as the body and lord arise in your mercy for your namesake but we keep becoming individualistic you as believers what is your pride our pride let me tell you the pride of our generation three things one revelation rema the extent to which you bring an exegesis of the truth and nothing is wrong with that right greek words hebrew words play around with all kinds of concordances and then dish out mysteries we love that two prophecy if i give you a prophetic word which is not bad three anointing and our definition of anointing is fall down not result fall down just make sure you hit that bench as a testament that the communicator is having something and so this erroneously become the pivot of our pursuit we're looking for revelation we're looking for an ability to communicate which is is is, is to be desired and then we're looking for an anointing to make sure when we step into a meeting people just fall up and down and when these things happen we believe that we are fine and we don't extend the scope of our alliance to god to extend beyond our personal comforts to think body in terms of administration you know i love koinonia thank god this is where he's planted me but in terms of the health of the church i am passionately concerned about the body of christ just follow me we're going somewhere tonight are we blessed the third error that i teach um, i have taught this already so is what i call exaggerated confrontation of error this is where it even gets sad exaggerated confrontation of error that means that error that is attempted to be corrected but not from a standpoint of love error that is attempting to be corrected from a standpoint of intrinsic intimidation by the supposed corrector now listen very carefully you see please come Jimin. can i use you Amen. when you see Jimin, one word you think wealth finances right well anointing too anointing no, at least last week you saw it praise god now watch this chances are that if god has called a jimmy to represent um that dimension of maybe the holy spirit and finances to people and i have a bias with finances either as a result of men, my mentality or my frustrations two of them can cause the same thing i can have a poor mentality or i can be secretly frustrated now if there is an imbalance in a Jimmy's life or his way of communicating that chances are that because i was angry since even before the imbalance came now that i have found a scapegoat of a lapse in him i will correct it in a way you know it was paining me this is not the point is not to correct the point is to vent out pain there is a big this exaggerated confrontation is even more deadly than error itself i once had a well somewhere a man of god was talking about those who were saying they teach people how to pray in tongues somewhere you know trying to be sarcastic that man himself does not pray in tongues he doesn't believe it but there is no there's no legitimate case for him to fight it so he now routes through a church or a man of god that he sees teaching people he now uses that one exception this is how you know error is exaggerated a man of god or a businessman or whatever picks one single error and robs it off beyond the proportion of his relevance you know that the, the goal is not to sponsor correction the goal is to help manage intimidation are we together now so Ejimi talks about money and all of that and all of a sudden i'm there in my frustration and i turn and i say be careful all these guys that just talk about money all the time the truth of the matter is that i may be right in speaking about that unique situation but it's not coming from a standpoint that wants to contribute to the health of the body i am only communicating because i am intrinsically frustrated thank you sir are we blessed some of us here seated looking at me have become victims even of this it tells on how we hate anointed people it tells on how we hate wealthy people are we together now yes
and so we try everybody right now is in the ministry of correction that is the latest anointing that is going all around everybody is correcting everybody everybody once you have access to a mic and you can talk and people can hear you everybody is correcting everybody let me tell you this the greatest danger in the church now is not error the greatest danger is imbalance and this imbalance has come from this third point this is where i want to build my case tonight so pay attention so that you find out whether you are part of it and trust god to help you tonight everybody shout imbalance there is something about the limitation of Pentecostals that our Orthodox brothers and sisters capitalize on and use it as the basis why you should not be open to the things of the Holy Spirit. Then there are things that the Pentecostals use as their excuse for thinking an Orthodox lifestyle is too mean and basic and all of that. And all of them may have some sense of justification but the truth is that there is an inner anger for one another just waiting for a legitimate excuse are we together now yeah whether it is an issue of marriage or finances or fidelity or issues that have to do with um, administration and leadership whatever it is how you know that correction is not coming from a sincere point is the exaggeration exaggeration I always say you use a, a hammer to kill a fly. A simple tap on that fly, it will die. But when you use hammer, you were angry. It's not about the fly. The fly just happens to be what the hammer is hitting. Obviously, that hammer was not designed for the fly. It's just that the fly got in the way of the hammer. And boy, will that hammer hit the fly. There is a spirit of pride. Listen carefully it looks like it's coming from god but i'm exposing lucifer there is something satan is doing in the especially among we men of god that god has privileged to have access to revelation and anointing and a dimension of the miraculous pride is gradually eating us up because we believe that because of the little results we have we have authority by ourselves to correct everybody and everything Every man of God is trying to show what another man is doing wrong. Everyone is trying to show that this is wrong. Why are you praying like this? The other one will say, you too, why are you keeping quiet when you are praying? The other one will say, what is the meaning of warfare? The other one will say, keep waiting, demons are coming. See, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Listen very carefully. Listen carefully. If we do not trust God to rise up and correct these imbalances, we are going to authorize Satan to destroy us. God's goal is not to produce koinonia in all the earth. If God gives me an assignment and says, Apostle, through you, the gospel will get to the ends of the earth. He was talking to all the people who will come out spiritually and prophetically through my loins through. There are ministries that will come out of me. They are an extension of that instruction. The idea is not to turn every believer in Nigeria into koinonia. It's a failed project from day one. And anybody who knows God will never be part of that failed agenda. So, God is not glorified when Koinonia has more members. God is glorified when the kingdom advances. Listen very carefully. Because right now, the entire scope of our soul winning agenda is sometimes is even sheep stealing. I say this because I love the body. You are sitting quietly taking fresh air. Someone comes to preach to you. You say, okay, I'm already born again. As soon as he's leaving you, another person is coming. Say, your brother just, we say, it doesn't matter. You just listen. Have you, have you been given, um, um, are, you, are you aware of our church services? He say, yes. He say, come. And the next time you see him, look how people feel guilty and blackmailed because I invited you for koinonia, you didn't come. And you make it look like you are the worst sinner in the whole world. You are just because you did not come. That's not salvation. That's pressure. Like banks give people target bring this by this month we have begun to propose some of those campaigns and we must be careful kingdom advancement is not the advancement of a name of a church is the advancement of the agenda of god in the hearts of men and across the spheres now it 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 is important that the individual ministries do their best to be the the platforms for people to be saved and equipped but that's not the idea 
there are people it's one of the reasons why pastors never invite people to their pulpit because someone comes and in two minutes before he preaches he has said almost 90 things about his church and sometimes some can even be sarcastic to downplay the church that now invited them you hear about people who go for conferences and before you know it while in that conference he saw a keyboard is playing well he saw a worshiper singing well and the man of god will collect their numbers travel back and now call them and begin to indoctrinate them you are, are you you sound too good your pastor doesn't deserve you come and join a moving train we say and then the member now leaves his church to join the supposed moving train and then we make it look like god is only with us it is pride let me repeat the idea that makes you believe you are the only representation of god in a territory is pride the day koinonia believes that we are the only and even the ultimate representation of god in this region is a sign that error has already eaten beginning from me to everyone may god forbid it are we together now yes this is the basis behind the show of superiority from men of god to churches to business people imbalance imbalance the the inability to construct the truth of god's word so that it becomes edifying to you and to the body now let me teach you something the dealings of god has a side effect watch this i've shared it here that if god calls me into the healing ministry watch this because of the character and the nature of my training are we together it will require a level of meticulousness in a dimension chances are that because of my concentration i will trivialize other matters of the kingdom too they are important but because they were not captured in my training process i will assume that they are not important are we together now so when i now come up this is the healing evangelist evangelist joshua selman and i'm healing and when i see somebody in another dimension is the reason why we reject certain ministries in the body because we have not been trained you see young people come and dance and while they are dancing someone is just waving his head and say what a wasted generation simply because the way god trained you that was not captured as part of the experience of the training so you can downplay it then to mean that these are not serious things when people come to church they sleep and snore every other time until the man of god comes in now the uh, god has been moving since praise and worship you were not taught to respect it a time of worship people are rolling on the floor god is speaking to people someone has received this breakthrough already but you were trained that until someone stands on stage so if the man of god now comes and starts rolling you say what kind of church is this you don't preach here I want you to listen to me very carefully why am i teaching you this because god is helping us to be a blessing to many others are we together in balance there are many people in the body of christ whose ministries have been strangled no room to find expression simply because the man of god who founded the church the experience of allowing those ministries to find expression were not captured in his dealings with god and so because of that the moment you see any other ministry that is outside your scope of understanding you fight it you abuse it you can call it of the devil you blackmail it amazing do you know why god limits you like this so that it is in partnership with other dimensions in the body you see how complete the body is you see that so if god has granted me grace to walk in a dimension of the teaching ministry and i don't walk say in miracles and sam come sam sam walks in the miraculous it is my identifying with sam it now supplies a dimension of god that i wouldn't have seen are we together now for sam the way god dealt with him it was just vision and power so when sam comes to the stage he said look stop all this grammar of bible study let's go straight to wheelchairs he is also in error he does not know it's just that his own 
nature of ministry is what is desired by the masses they want power immediately so chances are that you will see that in Sam's church you receive miracles but there's no spiritual growth because the system he just the it was the God Almighty God that was the revelation that was given to him for you the rabbi of rabbis that's what you got so you can sit down and teach one series for one year and then I reject you I say Sam all it takes is mental transformation not power people need to be leaders and then Sam is saying continue there you are watching your members crying what they need is power both of them God is with them but they believe God is not with each other you see that mistake Benjamin, please can I use you again please come and then all of a sudden this guy comes he's a leader he's an entrepreneur he's a businessman and I said look all these your business principles I laid hands on somebody a millionaire's child without knowing any finance thing and all of a sudden they gave me an estate all these things you are trying to teach people is nonsense teach them power and estate comes and the members ignore this principle and they find out that estate didn't come after 10 years the man is married now the preacher got an estate but the hearer didn't get it are we together now all three of them now chances are that a Jimmy may be angry and say look at this guy power 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 let's see whether you ever rise to the government this is the fight now everybody let me tell you what Satan does when Satan wants to destroy you if he knows there's nothing he can do about your anointing he covers you from seeing the body so the only thing you see is your church and your performance and based on that he will now use supposed loyal sons to keep you in that state the power when you came into that meeting you know i like you you don't talk anything no verse bible was not open straight to power and he said you mean it you were impressed say yes now this is a group here hiding themselves and shortchanging themselves in imbalance yet they will believe that because the man sees visions he has the entire scope of what god is doing and then he will have the effrontery to now indoctrinate his members into believing that anytime you see our teacher man or anytime you see our businessman ignore them just get power and rest and that's what is happening so we have a congregation of people today who have no regard for the word of God. Turn to Philippians, you see them just snoring. Once you hear, so, ah, 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 you see, that's right, this is, I mean, we are, we are in church now. That's all people want. And while that shout is going on, the business guy says, when you finish, go and pay your rent. Shout, roll on the floor, your rent is, the, the tribute collectors are there. And you can't say he's not godly because he's rich. And it's with part of the money your church was built. So the pastor can't shout at him. You know what it will mean to you. Look at the confusion. Now let me tell you. No one of these three will admit they are incomplete. It is one of the hardest things for men of God to do. To admit that regardless of what they have seen. They need to spread their horizon beyond the scope that was revealed to them to see the body. It is in the seven lampstands that the fullness of Christ was seen. The seven lampstands. I had a voice when I turned, I didn't see Christ. I saw the complete church with all the dimensions. When I saw the complete church, I saw the fullness of Christ. If I had seen two of them, I would see only his hands and think God is a hand. Then I see another church and see his eyes and think all to God is prophecy. Then I see another church and I see his legs and I think all in life is progress. But the complete church revealed the complete Christ. Is God speaking to us? This is a revelation that will bless you beyond imagination. And so Ejimi now organizes a seminar to correct people and gathers all his members and say look all those power guys don't mind them all those revelation guys the bible says money answer it that's the members answering him now all things whereas there's somebody dying in the hospital with cancer a millionaire 
that money cannot do anything about are we together now answer it all things and if any of his member dare ask him and say sir why don't the power of god work in you say are you stupid am i not rich is that no power you see that person becomes a disloyal person imagine how many of us are called disloyal for asking questions pastor we don't pray in tongues in this church but is it all right don't ever ask me i am this i am that don't go and join all those riffraff roadside prophets man of god is it okay if i meet a man of god to hear the counsel of god no the word is everything just focus on the word don't let any roadside prophet come and deceive you whereas that man is in utter confusion and five minutes of this ministry can correct 10 years in his life many members would have moved forward if only they went to where the eyes of god is but they refuse because the pastor has the hand of god and they keep seeing the hand of god the hand does not see it only holds what the eyes see listen to me because many of us are starting ministry now some of us are in ministry some of us are leaders and already we are if we are not careful we're get, we getting into big error we've been mentored by all kinds of people that's why i see as a man of god if god gives you any influence over people go and pray and say lord let me not raise a people that will be defiant from your patterns I say it with all humility not to blow the trumpet of this ministry but by his grace koinonia has been part and parcel of the building and the lifting of many ministries as a person we have account numbers of many ministries that i'm not even connected to they are not my friends we could just hear that there is a program somewhere and say look we have to do something the other day i think dunamis came and they were opening their branch here our protocol department all of them they said no let's go and serve i said quickly make sure that anything that is needed let it be given my koinonia i am apostle i'm the owner of zaria god gave it to me it's my property no this is why men of god don't sleep this is why men of god yoke members with covenant swear that you will stay why will i swear why you change clothes why why shouldn't i i mean i, I should swear that what or we now make it prophetic god told me the day you leave me or the day you do this there is a cause where this is a lie there is no cause coming anywhere anywhere just because someone is falling down when we are saying it does not mean it's a lie there is no cause anywhere even god you can choose to leave him i said before you life and death why will somebody come and threaten you let me tell you the truth i love the body but it's a lie it's our insecurity it's not the holy spirit don't blame the, the holy spirit has no part in this people stay when they are changed people don't just become loyal to a leader foolishly don't you know that in the kingdom you keep things by leaving them hmm. whosoever keeps his life shall lose it whosoever keeps his members shall whosoever tries to keep money shall but whosoever loses it for my sake are you learning something thank you sir exaggeration now let me teach you something it is true that there are erroneous things in the body but hear me correcting the body of christ is a ministry you have to be called into it the same way god calls someone to be a prophet you are called is part of the apostolic and prophetic system of governance and it's not just every apostle and every prophet that is a corrector even among apostles and prophets there are rankings and dimensions not just because you're an apostle or prophet or pastor or teacher i am pastor so 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 i read in harvard i am no no sir we are misleading people there are spiritual conditions for you to have the authorization to be shown the weakness of the body let me tell you this you can observe what you think is the weakness of the body but god can show you what is the weakness of the body there is a condition to end that level of intimacy from god where god can show you this is where my body is weak correct it hey, Jimmy. 
if your son or your wife feels down do you just walk to anybody on the street and say my wife my son has a little rashes here or my son has knife caught him here and you open your son's cloth do you do that you go to an authorized place called a hospital and even in that hospital you enter a room and if need be in that room you can pull up and you are comfortable because it is the authorized place where that matter is addressed if you pull your son's cloth on the road somebody will look at you and say man of god what is going on but if you pull your son's cloth there it is the place not every place is a place of correction let me tell you this there is a condition you must sustain as a man of god to be afforded the opportunity to contribute in correcting the body and that element is not prayer that element is not fasting that element is not even revelation that element is genuine love for the body not for god for the body you will never be given access to correct the body until you love that body you can't correct the body from the standpoint of hatred you can't correct the body from the standpoint of resentment you can't correct the body from the standpoint of error it's impossible if i hate keyboards and this guy is making a mistake i don't have the right to correct him because my correction will meet with a bias that has been there let me tell you this i travel a lot and you can ask those who travel with me i go to all kinds of churches and they do all kinds of things sometimes i am surprised when i see what people do in many churches my mind i say if i catch my child doing that kind of thing we will talk oh, we will talk seriously yet I am able to have the accommodation let me give you a secret if you look at Christ in every church you will find him mm. let me repeat they went to a tomb where there was no life and found Jesus there a tomb where there is no life yet when the woman kept looking she saw Jesus in that tomb is it in your Bible the living have nothing to do in the grave but a woman was determined to see Jesus and although her location was the grave, she still saw him. So that dead church that you think your pastor is as dead as whatever, the day your heart is humble and you know that the builder is not a man of God but the spirit of God, one day in the confusion of your pastor, he will say something that is the secret for your lifting. Now, we who God has helped with little revelation, little grace here, this is what we do when we go to church we hold our bibles arrogantly and sit at the back we don't sit in front because the man doesn't have anything to say and then he comes as usual turn to the book of this and that and god so loved the world are you aware of this and someone is just nodding and say oh god i i would have listened to a message that would bless me what is this guy doing and wasting my time and you think what you are demonstrating is superiority because of spiritual level is a sign you have fallen for the deception yourself because the higher you rise in the kingdom the more you know we are products of his mercy so while you stand there and watch the man of god ramble and make mistakes and quote wrong scriptures in the midst of it you what if you really look at jesus the holy spirit will start speaking to you and say truly there is this treasure in earthen vessels he said this man may not be so accurate yet he has been pastoring for 15 years and the members didn't leave him while you who has revelation is struggling to have 10 members and the god starts revealing to you you are now seeing jesus in that weak man that there is a grace upon this man one day in the midst of his confusion he would tell you t.l osborne came to lagos and he was part of those who were helping to hold his bag and T.L. Osborne touched his head. He said, that's where he got it. Pastor, I know you don't preach well, but I just found out you are carrying something I need. Touch me. And the man said, no, are you who preach very well? I was impressed. He said, Pastor, you were impressed with my revelation, but what I need now is what you carry. There is no man of God that comes to my life that I cannot receive anything from. That's why I see some of our fathers. I don't sit down and say, oh, revelation, revelation. There are places I travel to minister. I already know that they may not have that level of word content. But when it's time to pray, I'm humble. Please, reveal it to me. Many of us are about to lose it. 
because if it is not a company of people who have your level of spiritual enlightenment they don't matter to you you will miss something because the greatest treasures you need will be hidden in that reverend that cannot speak english that reverend that is one day god will tell you go for the capro missions program i say lord me me that i'm looking to be young what is capro how many will forest to go and win with soul when i can snap my finger i've learned the law of exemption and god says break your pride and follow them to that village you follow them to that village and you sit down and see a house reverend who has not been sick once for 22 years god will say this is why i brought you kneel down let him release something upon you before you carry your pride and be lying that you have not taken drugs for 30 years and die two weeks later on kneel down let that man give you something genuine let me tell you this one of the secrets of my spiritual growth is my open-heartedness towards the body not necessarily my perfection in pursuing god my open-heartedness that does not mean you jump at error no no when i discern grace i realize there is something this woman never built a house but she never went hungry she would tell you every pastor that rose up came and stayed in her house there is something you should receive there we are about losing that's why many of us do you know let me tell you one of the things with error once you stay in a dimension and don't open up to the body your area of strength will magnify and your area of lapse will become clear it will be clear that only your hands are growing but your head is remaining small it will be clear that you are growing in prosperity but your knowledge of God is diminishing. It will be clear that you are growing in the miraculous, but you don't have a heart for God. By the grace of God, I want to raise the balanced people that they can look at your life and see that the matters of life, when they come to passion for God, you are there. Prayer, you are there. Not because I have all, but I know how to bring all. I travel somewhere and I see a man of God ah apostle you are the great man and your messages while he's saying that i'm observing lord what do i see this man has more character than me i may pray more than him but if we stand here and somebody is about to kill us i would deny christ and run but this guy will stay and die that means there is a grace for courage that i need our pastor is coming from adamawa state i had the privilege they invited me i've been there three times now sir yes three times and when Boko Haram struck 2014 sir am I right and destroyed those people in Mubi it was that meeting that was like um, it was a starting point for the churches again while I preached and saw the way they honored me I asked myself a question I said with all this mouth I make if I was part of the pastors that stood before Boko Haram will I denounce Christ don't be too fast say me uh -uh. now there are protocol people protecting you but there a pastor can go out in the morning and say wife if you don't see me just know that i died for christ that means there is a grace you say the man is not praying in tongues but you who is praying in tongues you run away at a sound on your zinc this guy is standing and watching a gun do you think it is normal no by faith abel offered it takes something to offer yourself now a wise man will meet that man of god and say sir you may not have the grace to preach and heal like me but i see that there is a dimension revealed to you if i stay where i am i will raise sons that can pray but never stand for christ i need that grace i admit i don't have it i admit that dimension has been opened up to you i humble myself sir it does not make you small this is what we will never do as men of god our pride will never allow us we will hide and listen to tapes in the secret. Hi. And some of you are already learning those kinds of things. You never see yourselves and celebrate yourself. That guy is Pastor Femi. Pastor Femi of where? Rema. Which, which Rema? Ah, please, I came into this town. I'm, I'm a man of God already. Who is this pastor? The, of where? Under who? No, if you don't change from this a generation will show that there was a lapse of God 
that we did not tap into don't ever let anybody say the prophetic is not useful just because you found the word of God don't call every prophet a reef raff and a roadside prophet there is a dimension only prophecy can birth no amount of study can bring you there there is a dimension only mental transformation can bring so don't insult Mel Mel Mensa Otterbill and say oh these guys are just uh -uh. there is a dimension only Joyce Mayer can bring there is a dimension only Benny Hinn can bring there is a dimension only Dr. Lukoya can bring there is a dimension only Papa Kumui can bring you ignore Dr. Lukoya and demons kill you in your pride. You die the death of a fool before your time. A man who was the best in molecular genetics and left it. Left something, went to school abroad. Exceptional in molecular genetics. And came and humbled himself to carry the cross. And all of a sudden you see him. And just say, what is all these things? We even mimic them in laughter. And the demons say, thank God for such a foolish generation. Are we together? Then you see a man of God. Papa Iya Deboe can just stand. I'm mentioning names because I'm saying positive things about them. And because their fathers indeed. May God bless you. And you're like, I, I need... And you listen to td jakes and while he's moving keyboards are playing and moving and you just came out of seven days dry retreat like a skeleton almost dying i said what is this guy saying is it just to say you will come out that you can't say in one minute and while you are there in your pride slaves left africa and went to us god picks a man out of them and makes one of the best preachers you didn't ask how it happened when they traced his origin, they found out he's Igbo, a Nigerian. Are you learning? Who have you resented because of imbalance? Some of us right now, we love God, but we have been, we have educated ourselves into believing that some people in the body are not relevant for our growth. I'm telling you, you are already in imbalance. Especially if you are a man of God. If you are hearing me and you are in this mistake, change now. Change quickly. Never go back home and put men of God and keep bringing them one by one. Oh, this one doesn't have fire. This one, he doesn't have this. Ah, this one, I like his suit. I like this one, I like his this. Be careful. There is one Lord. There is one faith. There is one baptism. There is something that Joshua Selman will never see, even if I fast for 400 days. It will not be covered by a demon. It will be covered by God himself. So that I will need Ejimi to see it. There is something Ejimi will never see until he looks at a Pastor Toby or a pastor here in Adamawa. There was something about God I learned when I went to Adamawa, sir. I, I say it. I have never seen a level of generosity from people like that. Women, some of them old enough to be my mother. And you see, I'll say it. Till today, when I go to movie, they see me, they start jumping, daddy, oh, yo, yo. People with doctors, lecturers, with such depth of humility. I don't know if I can do that for anybody. And while they do those things, I don't sit down with my pride and say, wow, you mean they acknowledge me this far? I sit down and say, Lord, let this grace for humility that will be upon a man of 50 years before I now die in the next 10 years because of pride. Do you see that God has put the remedy for our fall in the body but because we could not tap into it? Imbalance is a destroyer. There are many families today that have no business being in poverty if they would listen to those carrying the graces. It's amazing that what we resent is what we secretly desire. Oh, I prophesy, your name is divine. Ah, man of God. And so, yeah, oh, these riffraffs, divine. Whereas one day he tried to, he said, What's your name? Are you Gabriel? He said, No, I'm a Jimmy. And just, ah, he said, No. He, 
he wanted it secretly he was just too hot and then he said no what is not all about prophesying we must be careful most of the things people criticize they test it secretly when it becomes too hot they live as if nothing happened then they create a theology ah, ah, how can one person be praying for 12 hours life is not all about prayer that man has tried to pray secretly he, he thought it's just by energy the grace is not there so he sees someone fasting dry two weeks there's a man i know in abuja i don't know anybody that fasts on earth like him one day maybe when we were doing something in koinonia and he honors me a lot i'm sure i'll bring him one day to pray that man can go for um, no food no water not that you drink water in the night dry If that man prays, even standing close to him, you will feel as if they are electrocuting you. I literally mean it. There is no deliverance case that gets to that man that goes back free. Papa! Before, I, no, I'm serious. I really am serious. That guy has stretched this body and brought it under subjection. The kind of power that is in that man's voice. Yet he will come to me like this and still kneel down. Sometimes I'm tempted to say, stand up, oh. You better stand up and lay hands on me. How you know you love the body is your outspoken celebration of the uniqueness in it. The moment you are ashamed to celebrate the uniqueness in the body is a sign that something about it is intimidating you. Oh, a beautiful song. Look how wonderful this guy's voice was when he was singing. I was just listening to his speech. I said, who dash monkey banana? Let me try that thing. I was in a Okuta. My voice ceased just because it was raining. Yes, someone shouting. <laughs> Are we together? Now, don't forget, for those of you who know a little about me, I was once a music director. I'm not naive musically. But now I carry my pride and try what he's doing and that's the end of it. There's no koinonia for one month. So I can choose to respond to my frustration by trivializing him and say it's not all about pitch. The most important thing is the message. No, sir, we need the pitch too. Otherwise, recite a poem, don't sing. <laughs> it's not all about prosperity, okay? Carry everything in your house and give to the poor. The blogger who is talking is using an iPad that he bought 250,000 and say it's not all about prosperity. Are we together? It's not all about money and there is a hot meal in your kitchen waiting for you and there are poor people there. It's not all about prayer yet you have intercessors in your church praying for you. So you know prayer is important. It's not all about fasting, yet people are fasting for you. It's not all about prophecy, yet you call and say, eh, promise, just find out whether God is saying something around this. I'm agreeing with you. It's just that I, I'm not, I had something I just want to, I won't tell you because I, it's pride. Just say, help me, sir. I'm trusting to hear something. I'm a man of God too, but there's, there's this, the vision is hazy. I'm not seeing very well. What is there? Does it mean you are not born again? A hazy vision is something that happens to everybody. Jesus touched people many times. Are we together? You must reject imbalance. The imbalance that comes in approaching the body. The imbalance in camping around a dimension as revealed to you. And ignoring the usefulness of what God has distributed in the body. You must sustain a fortitude tonight to embrace. There is something I've learned from our children that no adult can teach me. No matter how simple and well behaved you are. These children have taught something. They have taught me faith. They have taught me courage. Some of, do you know some of these little children are in prayer department? Am I right? Prayer department. They don't miss it. So if a child can be in a prayer department what excuse does an adult have pray you tell them i'll buy you sweets they won't forget they come back and say uncle my sweet they never ask whether you have the money 
because they expect you to be adult enough to check whether you have money first before speaking now you learn that thing and when god says i know the thoughts i think towards you like a child you don't start asking lord where will the uncle come from no. you stop learning when pride closed your eyes may humility open it tonight so that you can see what is going on you see that's why many of us don't know what god is doing in the body we only knew what he was doing with us in our little corners and we get up and say revival is coming when it has started since because you were not there the virgins had oil but they could not go to the market there were others who had in abundance but the foolish virgins did not get more a time came their own finished they had their own oil but they would have gone to get some more the same way joshua selman has anointing but i need to get some more from benny Hinn. i need to get some more from kenneth copeland i need to get some more because the challenges in the future at this my level of anointing will eat me as if i'm not anointed so i will not allow the pride because of the level god has brought me now believe that i can stand benny Hinn's kind of challenge so i need the grace so i will listen when pastors come to me for counseling there's nothing that humbles me more than that and some of those people are anointed people dr luca and dr john sent me a text and they said apostle we are coming over and i said oh dear i love you when i was told i was told that since around 4 a.m or so this is the assistant chaplain he's also a man of god himself but he came here since around four to sit down what is there about a man the veil has been torn and it tears and you do you don't enter the veil has been torn you are still poor the veil has been torn you are still this whereas you can humble yourself and say every house is built by some man but god is the builder of it all there are people who must assist you in life otherwise you will never rise it's not pride one of the things that god helps me to do at the beginning of the year i go and our daddy escorts me to go and meet the pastors of cgc i go and greet them and get down on my knees with just a little i honor them and i get down on my knees and the pastor and his wife they speak and prophesy over me and lay hands over me i won't come and say see crowd no there is a grace if i were their age i don't know if i would submit to a small boy like this so lord help me before this pride that comes with middle belt and kill me where we don't have anything yet we make a lot of noise lord deliver me from it so that i can look at one of these our little ones tomorrow and say apostle i saw myself laying hands on you and i said do it the girl is shaking i said i said do it and she lays hands and from that day you enter a dimension of revelation you can sit and say god forbid transfer it to another adult let me receive it from the adult and god says you will never get it that way are you blessed yes imbalance is dangerous is why we have not seen i remember years ago i tried to pray for a woman i think somewhere in abuja also i can't remember i prayed for that woman i have never felt helpless before a sick body like that day you know how you pray and you know that there's no hope of that prayer being answered under that condition i couldn't feel any anointing the woman just stood there it saddened me i encouraged this woman koinonia no koinonia had not even started it was just about to start i said lord how can a man be this helpless i came in your name bragged in your name if you see the scriptures i was quoting quoted this 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 the kingdom of god is not in word but in power and all that there was no power yet the bible say in my name i did it it didn't work that meant i need to submit to somebody who has the eyes of the spirit to tell me what the bible was saying because it's clear i did not get what jesus was saying are we together and yet i watched benny Hinn climb up the stage before he raised one worship song 40 wheelchairs 40 brothers and sisters this thing is not magic if you don't have it find it because it is there 
if it is not in your life it is not missing it only requires the humility to search you desire the prophetic and it's not in your life it is available it will take your humility to search man of God I have prayed but I know God has directed me but I do not know whether or not God is calling me to Kogi or Lafia and the moment you are talking the Lord just tells the person Lafia and he says the Lord is sending you to Lafia in one minute the word of the Lord came because of your humility to align instead of fasting for 100 days and you hear Lafia just when you round up the fast you hear a quiet bomb and as soon as you round up the fast you hear Joss you see that whatever is a limitation to you we are going to pray please listen carefully whatever is a limitation to you the word limitation is relative everything you need is already resident within the body if your life is poor God did not make it so you ignore the grace that conveys that possibility if your prayer life is dead it is not God's will you have ignored the envoys that he has put that supply of the spirit upon if you do not have access to the deep things of God it is because pride has made you to take away the relevance the necessity of the Word of God I look at people and with all humility I know they have stopped growing they've not backslidden but they put a peg around their lives simply because they cannot open their door and say oh God bring in other dimensions that are not here they stood there and you know that's not their best that's not their greatest hallelujah praise the Lord tonight is my prayer that God will deliver us from the error of imbalance that we will escape the danger of imbalance 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 that we will not trivialize the dimension of God that is required for our lives all dimensions cannot be in your life but all dimensions can work for you listen carefully all dimensions cannot be in your life it's impossible but all dimensions available can work for you meaning that it's impossible for me to be as prophetic as ever as apostolic as ever as evangelical as ever no there is the limitation that god puts i can be benny Hinn and kenneth copeland and joyce mayer and td jakes and bishop oyedepo and papa Ia Deboe at the same time with the same degree no sir i have to be one of them but i can enjoy what is on bishop oyedepo papa adeboye benny Hinn. i can enjoy it through the humility of participations the word koinonia sharing together the ability to extend your hand through humility to say sir i have seen the dimension of god's grace in your life and i'm open to let it work in my life and honor becomes the key to that access and all of a sudden you find out that what was a mountain to you is trivialized under a certain kind of grace people have prayed for me in my life i have been a product of many people's prayers i have been surprised at how powerful the body of christ is i have prayed for people and sometimes i look at what they call a mountain and i am shocked because i know how easy that problem can be solved and in my mind sometimes i wonder where, where were you why did you allow it to get this bad before locating the body for help are we together there is something tonight that you need in god for you to move to the next level that is not yet in your life but it is available and for many of us the error of imbalance has made you to think that because your life cannot produce it it cannot be produced so you just say if it was for me god would have brought it directly through me and just because it didn't come directly through me then it's not important please hear me prosperity is as important as healing healing is as important as prayer 
prayer is as important as visions are we together salvation is as important as mental transformation mental transformation is as important as your health and hygiene stay in your area of calling but do not allow imbalance make you trivialize what god is doing god is not only walking in koinonia brothers and sisters god is walking across zaria god is walking across the north god is walking across africa it is only a privilege for us to be at the level that we are now in his program it's a privilege for us to be contributors that's the word contributors that you can come and listen to the supply of the dimension that god has put in me of course administratively speaking it it is important for you to be able to stay in your area of whatever ministry or whatever church you are part of for the purpose of administration and leadership however let me tell you the truth any man that indoctrinates you into camping around him alone and all the dimension revealed to him whether in the name of mentorship or fatherhood has deceived you if i am your spiritual father it means you have taken you have come under my authority but it does not mean that i represent all of christ to you i represent the voice and the speakings of god in your life but i must have the flexibility to allow you grow and this is my goal god knows i get materials that have nothing to do with me i send it to people in the ministry listen listen to it this will bless you it bless me so much Are we blessed? We are going to pray. Father, my, my father would have prospered if only he listened to that prosperity preacher. He said prosperity preachers are rubbish. Now my father is an evangelist who has lost his house, although a preacher of the gospel. Lord, my arrogant business partner father would have been such a man of prayer and he would have seen that accident before it happened but he ignored it because he thought everything was money and he neglected the place of prayer and evil came sat in our house and there was no eyes to see and nobody to manipulate things from the realm of the spirit and we died that death was not caused by god the refusal to tap from what god is doing close your eyes until there was destruction there's nobody to help me in school no if only you listen to the person that god used to say go to this church you would have found somebody who would have sponsored you it is your refusal because you never believe that there are people kind enough to sponsor you without strings attached and your imbalance did not allow you to tap into that dimension tonight i want us to start with a prayer of repentance lord forgive me for trivializing your other dimensions scattered across the body thank you for what you have shown me as a man of god lord forgive me for insulting business people forgive me for calling prosperous people wasters of your time lord i forgive me for calling prayer warriors hungry noisemakers forgive me for insulting deliverance forgive me for insulting the prophetic i ask for mercy for insulting people who transform the mind in the place of prayer forgive me for thinking those who are the the personal development experts are useless to your agenda forgive my ignorance that has come through imbalance this imbalance has cheated me and my life has lost the flavor that should be go ahead and pray the reason why I am not blessing all things is because imbalance has pecked a dimension of God from my life. If I opened up myself to the healing ministry, I would have carried that healing anointing. My church would have been a church that experienced this healing. I rejected the prophetic and now confusion is destroying my life. Lord, I ask for mercy. I've exaggerated the prophetic and I've left the word of God. Now I've gotten into witchcraft and error. I've become a slave to prophets. Have mercy on me and let me return back to the word. 
have been so obsessed with power and signs and wonders that there is no place for spiritual growth being grounded and established in the word of God. All I look for now is power. Lord, have mercy. Take away that imbalance from my life. Outside, make sure you are praying everywhere. Pray. The error, the danger, the destructive calamity that imbalance brings. Lord, I've ignored the anointing and all I do is just an empty theological Bible study without the power, without grace. So my church, my business, my family has no genuine anointing. Lord, I open up myself to the dimension of authentic power. Lord, I rejected excellence. I thought it was just about prayer and Bible study and healing the sick. I rejected excellence. Now all my TV programs are not accepted because they don't match a level of excellence. I have wasted resources because of lack of excellence. There are certain partners and helpers that excellence would have drawn to my ministry but lack of excellence threw, threw them away. I received that dimension. Pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. There is not, maybe not in Koinonia, but I observe the body of Christ and I see a widespread of prayerlessness. People don't pray again. Pray for me. That's the language of people. Oh, you are going for, please pray for us. So, and people don't pray. You know why? Because in a bid to balance this, we have insulted every prayer warrior, insulted anyone, any church that prays. These are just noise makers. It's all about money. And we have found out that there is no sensitivity in the body, no discernment. People don't pray. People don't travel. Gone are the days when you see people lock themselves somewhere and cry to the God of heaven. Now people fast and all, they just want cheap things. Oh man of God, let me sow a seed. Just touch my head. There are some things, it's not just by impartation. You must stay and cry upon the horns of the altar till something falls upon you from heaven. We are going to pray one prayer. And say, Lord, what dimension is needed for my next level? Open me up unto it, O oh God. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, if it is the prophetic that will take me to my next season, then I open up my spirit for it. If it's the miraculous that will take me to the next dimension, if it's a healthy, mental, transformed mind, Lord, I receive that dimension. Are we praying, please? If it's a restoration, of fire upon my altar that is the requirement for the next dimension i receive it if it's the knowledge of administration and excellence that i need lord balance my life lord balance my life balance my church balance my business balance my understanding balance my life balance my life Take away from me the sarcasm for prophets. Take away the sarcasm for Bible study. Take away the sarcasm for prayer. Take away the sarcasm for diligence. And Lord, let me incorporate these dimensions as coming from you. Hallelujah. Listen to me, we're rounding up. There are very anointed people, very anointed people who don't know how to speak before great men. Because to them, every gathering of people is a church service. And then God sends you now to your destiny helper and you don't know how to speak. And they throw you away back to the prison. Although you can interpret dreams, you didn't understand the protocol of seeing Pharaoh because you ignored the person who can teach you how to communicate. So you find out that the ministries never cross Nigeria.
because no other region can accept you you have not been trained to understand global leadership and you don't know how to synergize spirituality with people's culture you travel to another person's culture they jail you as a man of god because you do not understand the terms there are other ministries that the revelation god is giving them should go to the whole earth but your resentment for wealth has kept you poor and so nobody can hear your voice no tapes no books no nothing because prosperity that will give it wings is not there i can look at a congregation and tell in a split second the dimension they are ignoring because i see prayer warriors who the the oldest person there may be 60 years no car no house no school fees the moment they are driving children from school fees it's all it's all the prayer warriors children that return back home because they have ignored it now let me tell you something about imbalance your imbalance makes you represent misrepresent god to your territory because they are depending unbelievers are depending on the idea you give them about god make sure you give them a balanced perception don't present to them a God who empowers people and removes prosperity. Don't present to them a God who all that he does is to give them money and their spiritual lives. They are not saved. They are not born again. They are going to hell, but they have money. That's a misrepresentation. Don't present to them a man of God that is anointed, anointed, and there's no room to teach the word. So you have a congregation of members that never grow. You have occultists in churches and they never, never grow. They don't understand the principles. They destroy their homes. Half of a church is divorced with people because the teaching ministry, there is no teaching priest. There is power, but there is no wisdom to share the ministry that keeps homes together. Are we together? Or you can have a crowd of people who never pray. The prayer warrior in that whole church prays only for one hour. Because that dimension has been ignored. We're going to pray one last prayer. Balance my life. Balance my life. Lift your voice and cry. Balance my life. Lord, I receive leadership. Lord, I receive prayer. Lord, I, see, I receive wisdom through the word. Lord, I receive favor. Lord, I receive excellence. Lord, I receive the warfare dimension. I receive the prophetic. I receive the deliverance dimension of the world. Every provision that the grace of God affords, even if it is not working in my life, I am open-minded towards the body. No criticism and no resentment. I repent from criticizing any and every man of God regardless of the limitations i open myself to the multifaceted dimensions of god resident within his ecclesia i receive the dimension that brings speed i receive the dimension that brings establishment i receive the dimension that brings glory i receive the dimension that brings increase i receive are you praying Lord until now I've not seen the need to be filled with the Holy Ghost I thought it was just something for Pentecostals but right now I open my spirit to receive it's a dimension needed in my life it says listen my goodness a man holds a secret of the kingdom and begins to shock the entire Babylonian empire to a point that this happened. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar did what? He fell upon his face and worshipped who? God? Secrets make a man like a god upon the earth. A king removes his crown and says, what is this? Daniel. He says he worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer oblation and sweet orders to him look at verse 28 of the same verse 28 hear what daniel said 
Please, let's read together. He was now giving us the key. One to read. But there is a God in heaven that does what? And makes known to the king what shall be in the latter days. Brothers and sisters, the God we serve is a God that reveals secrets. He can call you and say, come, let me show you a secret. Do you know them? Do you know the mystery? What you see in this ministry by the grace of God, this little that God is doing is a product of mysteries. Don't you ever think it's a mistake. It can be reproduced anywhere, any day, anytime. Because it's a secret. It says there is a God in heaven. Everybody say there is a God in heaven. That will reveal secrets for me today. Yeah. There is a secret when you handle the story of your family will change tonight. Just one secret. Please believe me. There is a secret God can show you by prophecy tonight. And tell you look, look. This confusion. You are, you are amiss. This is what is wrong. This is the correction. There is a secret. That delay has a mystery that sustains it. Are we together? That bad luck has a mystery that sustains it. Don't just say people don't like me. Don't you know there is something that makes them not to like you? The same way somebody can turn and look at Benga and say, Benga, God just led me. I don't know why, but take 100,000. No, nobody just acts anyhow. They think they are acting out of compassion, but there is an influence in the spirit. <laughs> there is a God in heaven. That reveals secrets. Psalm 25 verse 14. Psalm 25 verse 14. I must burn this revelation in our hearts. I want us to really have it. Psalm 25 verse 14. It says the secret of the Lord is with who? Them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. The secrets of the Lord is not with believers. It's not with churchgoers, not pastors, not apostles, not prophets. Those who revere him, those who respect him, he will call you and say, come, let me show you something. Let me show you what makes ministry work. Let me show you something that can take your life. Let me show you something that can bring you promotion in your office. There is something. The Bible says the labor of the fool wearied every one of them because he does not know the road to the city. Not because there is no road. He does not know. And part of the blessings of the apostolic ministry and the prophetic ministry is access to the mysteries of a dispensation. Ephesians chapter 3, please. Give us chapter verse 1 to 3 Ephesians chapter 3 this is an apostolic ministry this is a prophetic ministry you must understand the spiritual implication this is what Paul is saying listen he says for this cause do you know that the mysteries of the kingdom have not um, it's not yet is not exhausted the revelation what we know in church today is not all there is god is still opening more doors and it takes the apostolic ministry to be able to receive and communicate these dispensational secrets current mysteries three verse one for this cause i paul the prisoner of jesus christ for you gentiles verse two if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word verse 3 read please one to read how that by revelation he made known unto me what the mystery he made known unto me he showed me by revelation as I wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby listen when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Next verse. Shocking. Listen. Which in other ages, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. 
was not made known to the sons of men. Stop. Listen. There are mysteries that have been uncovered in, in today's world that have not yet been, people did not access it before. Not that it was not there, but that mystery was not meant for that dispensation. And the Bible says, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto who? His holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. It didn't say reveal to believers. Please listen. This is not human worship. It didn't say reveal to believers. The current present truth, the operation of the Holy Spirit administratively is communicated in the body by the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic. So there are mysteries that God is helping us. One of the things I pray that will come upon us tonight is a mantle of revelation. Not just miracles, but that you hold on to something. The moment you enter your office, you know what to do to silence wicked men. The moment you step in, you know what to do to move to the next dimension. The Bible says, for Jesus himself knew what to do. Scripture says it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Can we pray in one minute and say, Lord, there is something I need to know to rise to the next level. Please show me. Pray. There is something I need to know. My God, I pray that you show me. Why does everybody hate me? Could it be that there is a mystery that I need to know? The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. Please pray. Lord, why am I just failing, failing in class? What is the mystery that will end my captivity? Why an endless circle of poverty? There is a key. Hand it to me tonight, oh God. Please hand it to me. Why do I just fall sick? Why is my church not growing? Why is my home dividing? There is a mystery. I humble myself tonight. Why is the anointing scarce in my life? Why have I not access influence in the spirit? Show me the mystery. Are you praying? Open my eyes. This is my year of multiplied grace and influence. It's my year. I place a demand. It's a right because of truth. Right properly. Just said up in the day of my youth when the secrets of the Lord secrets hear me coin we do business in this kingdom with secrets there are secrets we remain on the strength of mysteries pray is part of the meeting you're opening up your spirit Lord, I'm tired of cycles of failure. What's my family? There is a mystery that really brings deliverance. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says they are life to those who find them. And only those who seek find. They are light to those who find them and health to their flesh. Number 
The third thing the Lord asked me to share with us tonight, very powerful, is found in John chapter 5. Please give us John chapter 5. We'll read verse 1 to 9. The Lord wants to reveal a dimension of himself tonight as the helper. Listen. Listen. The Bible calls God a beniza. You know what that means? The helper of men. When God comes in to help you in life, you must succeed. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. We're reading down to verse 9. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, Bethesda having five porches. Right? Verse 3. In this lay a great multitude of... Look at the kind of people there. Successful people don't have any business with that environment. It's an environment that connoted weakness. It says, impotent folk of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Please pay attention. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And then whosoever, excuse me, whosoever then um, first, then first after troubling the water stepped in, was made whole of whatever disease he had. Can you imagine that kind of frustration? One person per year. Just like Nigeria says you should wait until somebody retires or dies. Then they say there's vacancy. You now come. One person per year was a horrifying situation. Then the Bible says there was a certain man, no name. There was certain which had an infirmity for how long? 38 years. After 38 years, anything you cannot do is a concern. Do you agree with me? After 38 years, anything you cannot do is a concern. At 38 years, no child is a concern. At 38 years, you cannot at least move into your house is a concern. At 38 years, there's nothing meaningful you are doing is a concern. The Bible says this man had been there 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie, now listen, God is about to speak to you. And knew that he had been there for how long? For a... The first revelation is that he knows you have been in that situation for a long time. He knows. And then the Bible says, he said unto him, will thou be made whole? Verse 7. This is what many of us are saying tonight. The impotent man answered, Sir, I have no man. I have no helper. I would have gotten the job, but I have no helper. I would have stepped into another level in ministry, but I have no helper. It says, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool. And tonight, God wants to be a helper. He walked to him. And the man said, I have no helper. But he said, I will help you. You don't need the pool. Rise up. He can use another route. The formula had always been fall inside the water. But he said, let's ignore the water. I am here. Rise up. The formula has been be blessed after 20 years but God is saying I can follow another route with you such that in one year I can do something in your life that will surprise you he said I have no man and the Lord said reveal to my people I will manifest as a helper when God helps a man you will be surprised the Bible says Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped marvelously helped part of the ministries of the holy spirit is as a helper he comes in to help you 
That's what grace is all about. That where your effort stops, and you say, Lord, if it's based on my qualification, oh, I read whatever it is. And God says, I am here. I can take you to another level. Oh God, I'm here. I've been barren. They said I don't even have a womb. And he says, I am here to help you. Who is God speaking to tonight? You really need help. Only an arrogant person will deny the need for help. I have been helped by people in my life. And I saw how easy my life became when they helped me. Are we together now? Watch this. Benga, come. I'm trying to lift this. And my hand is, I can't lift it. And then a helper comes. And sometimes he can even volunteer to carry everything. And he makes my life easy. The help of God can make a man's life easy. Please, let me preach to you for one minute. I have a responsibility over this house to tell you this and I must say it. Disabuse your mind from this satanic proposal coming from the media that Nigeria is in trouble. Economy, everybody shouting dollar. I'd like you to shout it, count me out. Say it. Shout it one more time. Listen, we are not irresponsible citizens. Don't get me wrong. We sympathize with what is happening in the nation. But if you dare let Satan speak to you, he will destabilize your creativity and crumble your life. People who have been irresponsible since before dollar have found a shield to explain their irresponsibility. Everybody says dollar is rising. Is it not in your Bible? When men say. Are we together now? It says you will say there is a lifting up. This is not the first time the economy of the world is going into trouble. The Bible says in the days of Joseph, it said money failed. Money failed. But there was a secret that was revealed to Joseph. There is what you hold on to that this year can be the most prosperous year in your life. Listen, God is looking for every opportunity to make a statement. Afford him your life. A Christian is not one who has just received Jesus into his life. A Christian, listen, is one who operates by the principles of the word of God. Our economy is different. And by economy, I don't just mean finances. Your health, whatever. There's Lassa fever. There's what again? Huh? There's Zika virus. There's which one again? They are, they are there. It's the one you know you are mentioning. What of the ones that are arrows that fly by day? Have they told you on TV? The Bible. Listen, listen. Psalm 90. Don't turn there. Our time is gone. Psalm 91 said, Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day. The noisome pestilence. Right? There are diseases. You breathe them all around. It takes a superior revelation to keep you. I reject everything whose price has been paid on the cross. I will not pay another price again. Are we together? You must understand the implication of your oneness with Christ. So he wants to be your helper. Can you hand over your life and say, God help me. Truly I've tried by myself. If you don't help me, I will never get this admission. If you don't help me, I will never graduate. If you don't help me, my certificate will remain a piece of paper. I will keep mocking myself with my accolades. Listen, if no one has told you, let me tell you again, our world is a cruel and a wicked world. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to trouble anyone. You just need to be alive. That's the condition to be a potential victim. 
when the lord told me this i said lord i first i receive for myself i receive for myself he is my helper when god comes in to help you he can round off what has taken you 10 years 10 years of captivity let me tell you something it doesn't take time when jesus is there it doesn't take time you will be watching the growth this is how it will live and you are saying where is it it's gone who is like him lion and the lamb seated on the throne His father and you know why I raised that song? If you think there are many gods, I know that we claim we are not idols, but I will show you now that many of us have been practicing idolatry. You know why many people never believe God? We still have options. Your uncle still said, okay, let's just see what happens at the end of the month. So while you are saying, Lord, I trust you, what you mean is, Lord, I trust you through my uncle. Are we together now? Lord, I trust you through that, that CEO. I met him and he said uh, he will consider my promotion. Lord, I trust you through my job. God says he will bless you and he said, I know my salary is on his way. Lord, I trust you and you say, I know. I, there's, there's that consultant surgeon. He's coming in next week from India. And God is just arranging it such that he's coinciding with my need. Who is like him? The lion and the lamb seated on the throne. Mountains bow down. Every ocean rolls to the Lord our Lord. Praise Adonai From the rising of the sun To the end of every day Praise Adonai All the nations of the earth All the elders and the saints Sing praise I believe God though I'm a man of faith I believe God he says, I know whom I have believed. I've seen God help people even in this place. In this place. Brothers and sisters, there is a mystery of lifting. God can take a man. You see somebody today and God can lift that person. If, if they looked at someone and said, when the, we can't see the process. When did Saul become a prophet? A man sleeps as a prisoner. But the next afternoon, he is already a prime minister. Oh, don't play with the God we serve. There is a mystery of the lifting of men. That you are about to die after one month. And after koinonia, you are not only alive, you are carrying the healing anointing. Who is this God that can bring speed to a man? I'm not motivating you. I know him. There is a mighty God who can wipe the tears of people. Let me tell you, this night, before we pray, just take away your mind from anything and everybody. Don't come to God with your calculation and say, Lord, my prayer request, I wrote my uncle, he must answer me. Leave that one. Let God choose. If God wants to use a chair to give you a breakthrough, let him give it to you. You've not read that God used a bed to bring bread for a man. Do you think if Elijah had an option, he would choose a bed? Was it not rock that brought water out from people? These things were not done in the spirit. It's just that we truly do not believe God. We think we do, but we don't. There are people who are sick here right now, but may never believe that God can touch them. Listen. Don't be so into your challenges that you think tonight God cannot touch you. It's easy to say, okay, God, I'm happy. I, I thank you for what you are doing. No, you must insist. Hallelujah. 
Luke 18 verse 1, the Bible says, He spake this parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. He said there was an unjust judge. He didn't fear anybody, not God nor man. And there was this poor widow who said, Avenge me my adversary. And for a long time, the man would not respond. And she kept pestering him. When you place a demand with your faith, there is enough grace. There is enough anointing. You can argue this and watch other people stepping into their testimonies. But please tonight, wherever you are, inside and outside, don't make it look like you have come to waste your time tonight. Are we together? God has revealed to us that he's coming in as a helper. Bless you, my dear. As a helper. As a helper. This ministry has been helped by the Lord. Greatly helped by the Lord. I think it was last week I was sharing the testimony. We don't have the opportunity to share one tenth. And by the way, I want to challenge you. When God blesses you, don't keep quiet. You return back to where you received the miracle and let the people of God know that this is what God has done. I shared the testimony last week. I think it was last week or two weeks ago. When Kaduna, after a meeting, just to have lunch briefly and then rush back. And I'm there and then a woman walks up to order a meal too and she's with a little son. Then I look at this woman and she was looking at me. She said, are you Pastor Joshua? I said, yes, ma'am. And then she greeted me. And I said, sorry, do I know you? And she smiled. She said, I'll tell you a little story. She said, two years ago, she came for counseling. As wretched, it was like she had come to the end of her life. I share this to encourage you. Hallelujah. And... Um, she said everything was scattering. She was a single mom with a child. Supposedly no hope for marriage. Nothing was working. They were about to throw her out on her job. And I prophesied to her and I said they were going to call her back and send her to the marketing department. She should not be afraid. And she said, man of God, that's exactly what happened. And she looked at me. And she said, can you imagine what has happened in my life? She just put her hand like this and I saw a ring. She said, I just got married two months ago. And then, she said, I should look outside. And there was a clean E-class. She said, who would believe that in two years I'll be the one owning this? My life has changed. Brothers and sisters, if you will believe, God can change your life. If you will argue, he will not argue with you. He will leave you to continue until you find enough reasons. Please, I want you to be angry today as we pray and place a demand on the throne of heaven and say lord you must answer me whenever i call you you will answer me elijah called on you and you answered him moses called on you and you answered him that's why i know wherever i call you you will answer me. Seated here, inside and outside, in all of the overflows, there are people with medical reports that if God does not visit them this night, they are dying for sure. I bring you a message of hope. The helper is in the house. There are families here who are in situations that will take a vigil for them to explain because they, the situation is so scattered, it doesn't have beginning and end. They don't even know where the problem started from. They know that they are in the middle of a situation. But the helper, when he comes, he can make every crooked path straight. There are people here trusting God for children. There are people here trusting God for a turnaround, breakthrough. Do you believe that God is stepping in? The worship team sang so beautiful and they challenged us. Do you believe that God is able to step in? We are going to pray right now. You are not praying for your neighbor. You are not praying on your request. You are going to pray for yourself and say, Lord, please, don't let me go back the same way I came. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside, please pray. Yes, Lord.
Alleluia. 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 One more prayer point. The power of God is so strong in this place. I'd like you to say, Lord, visit the foundation of my problem and set me free. Please, lift your voice and pray. What you think may be the problem may not really be the problem. Hallelujah. We're going to sing this song just seven times. And then I'll begin to minister. My goodness. I tell you, God will do extraordinary things in this place. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from, from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting no, 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 no. to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Praise the miracle walker from who will step into your life. Everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to One more time. Lord, we will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. Madam, let me talk to you, please. Yes. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting everlasting we will praise you from everlasting everlasting to everlasting hallelujah it's time for you to rejoice the lord is asking me to destroy witchcraft from your life and your family because you love the lord but there is a lot of oppression in your life is that true? Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that he's ending captivity today from your life. Right now, I command that spirit out by the power of the Holy Spirit. I stretch my hand. Something is leaving you. I'm seeing something being removed from your head. That's what I see happening. You will never be the same again. I command it out by the authority of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. And God is removing something from your stomach too. I'm seeing something leaving your stomach like a growth. I command it to go now. Right now. Right now. 
Fine, we will praise him from everlasting, everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Madam, check yourself. Give her the mic. Check yourself right now. Your stomach area. Check yourself. What is happening? Look at this. Because I saw that there was something. If I don't pray for you, huh? There's a movement. Movement. Because I'm seeing something. Later they will tell you it's fibroid. Huh? You are you are even afraid of going to the hospital. The hospital. Yes. Because you think they will tell you it's fibroid. That's really what they would have told you. But today we cancel it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everlasting to everlasting. Gabriel, I'm hearing the name Gabriel. Gabriel, Gabriel. Please let's save time. Gabriel, you are at that row. You are at the back. That row at the back. You are a gentleman at the back. That row there. Where is the person? Please come out quickly. You are wearing something like brown, brown shirt or something. Is there someone like that? Who is that? Come. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Eh? because I'm seeing another woman your mother is here the Lord is saying I should speak to her light is living from you outside there is a woman outside she's your mother where is she is she here or at, not outside at, at the is he at the edge of the wall or outside some who is that please is she here come mama God is wiping the tears of your family tonight Everlasting to everlasting, Lord, we will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting. you're welcome please stand up this woman has suffered i'm looking at this woman and i saw a load on your head that is reaching the roof and she's carrying it alone mama can you hear me look at this woman crying you see some of you don't know why god this is not just showmanship there are people here just seated close to you if they tell you their stories your own story will look like child's play because this woman has suffered mama you are a good woman but listen listen where where are you are you in zaria here yes, sir. in zaria what do you do i just said something i need to pray because i'm i'm seeing this is a cause i'm a widow sir. i know i'm going to pray for you do you know why i call this boy they want to kill him that's why i want to pray for him they cut. He matter they cut. This boy matter they cut. I go yesterday. Yesterday we go. They say on the tenth they will come back again. Eh? What cut? He get problem. He matter they cut. If I don't pray for this boy, as small as he is, they are going to kill him. Do I know you have a case in the court? Why would we call somebody? Like, don't don't be afraid, Mama, because this thing will even cause you problem. Um, Young man, I will pray for you. Mommy, look at me. This thing is a curse. Huh? The same way they killed your husband, they want to kill this boy and leave you in misery. Huh? Mama, I'm going to pray for you. There is a God that reveals secrets to men. Because I'm seeing a load right to the roof on your head. You are carrying it alone. I will pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is wiping your tears. I'm seeing a mother outside. The Lord is showing me a mother outside, a woman outside. Uh, it's like you are wearing her tie.
but it's not like a tie, same material. A tie like a normal, this thing. This, this, it's, a, it's an elderly woman outside sitting just by this side of the window. Please, I need to speak to her. If there is somebody like that, let's have a mother outside. The Lord is showing me. Mama, I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus for God to change your story. I don't know what is in the court, but in the name of Jesus, we will change it. How old are you? You are 14. You will serve the Lord in the name of Jesus. You believe that? Where are you from, Mama? I'm from Edo. You are from where? Old Edo, from Okwela. Where are you from? You are from Edo State. That's what the Lord is telling me because the same thing He's delivering two of you from. You see that? Mama, I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. God is destroying that spirit. Father, I lay my hands on our mom. The back pain, look at me, Mama. The back pain, you it 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 will be healed now. Amen. Hold my hands. Amen. Look at what is happening to her. Mama, shout Jesus loud. Jesus. Father, hold my hands for your glory. Mama, look at me. Look at me. You see something like fire moving at your back right now. That pain is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Do what you couldn't do. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Look at, look at, help her, cover her. It will never return to you in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you, my friend. I'm seeing you, but I'm seeing two heads. This is a misidentity. The devil wants to misrepresent you, but I'll pray for you. Huh? Your passion for God. Have good friends. If your friends are not good, leave them this night. May God give you good friends. In the name of Jesus Christ, grace for you. That anointing comes upon you, takes you to a new dimension. This is the woman, Mama, you are welcome. Let's celebrate Jesus. I'll pray for you, but there is another woman I'm talking about. There is another Mama outside who needs to come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus. You have a daughter. Yes. Where is she? She's outside. She's outside. Call her. Come. Daughter, where are you? Please come. Shim. What's her name? Shim. Shim. Please, you had your name rush and come in. Our time is gone. Who is this? I told that you am the one. No, the woman I'm talking about has her tie. Um, it's not the same as the material. It's not the same as the material she's wearing. I'm looking for a head tie that looks close to it. Ladies, now the normal scarf that you carry and tie. But I will pray for you. Anybody that has come out, I'll pray for you. I don't know why she's here, she's here. but I'll pray. For you. you are already out. I'll pray for you, please. Let's, let me just minister to those that are here. I'll pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Please, you can return back to your seat. Let me talk to you. Your daughter? Uh, Mama, I'm going to pray for you. The Lord is visiting your family in the name of Jesus Christ. He's visiting your family. And look at me, my dear. God is taking delay from your family. Tell your mother... This is your grandmother, right? Huh? Who is like your mother? She is oh, mine. I see. I, I, oh, I get the story now. Your real mother is dead. This is your grandmother, but she's like your mother now. Oh, I see. Because the Lord is saying I should tell your mother, whoever is that, that she's going to lift her. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Mama, God is lifting you and is wiping your tears. And the Lord is telling me that he's adding years to your life. Believe me. Who 
is this? Your what? Sister, but she has um, son and daughter. You have a daughter? She has a daughter, but she's my elder sister. She's your elder sister? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll talk with you. We have to really rush. Mama, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. The God I serve will bless you. He will honor you. What do you do, my dear? I'm a student. Where? In ABU here. ABU here. I'll pray for you. God is bringing favor upon your life. Look at me. You will really be a blessing to Mama. And make sure you bless her with all your heart. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Bless you, Mama. Come. Come. Two of you. You love Jesus? Are you part of them? Come. You love Jesus? No, you are stubborn. Come. You need to be prayed for. Come. You don't love Jesus. You are, you are very stubborn. But Jesus loves you. You are a stubborn boy. You have bad friends. You don't listen. We have to pray for you. There is a spirit disturbing you. You need to be delivered. Let her go right now. Out! Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands. I command that devil. Hmm? They want to make your sister mad. Eh? What's wrong with her? It's mad, sir. It's mad. Yes, sir. This is madness. She will be free right now. She came here mad. You are joking. This is koinonia. I command that spirit. She's mad. Out! You must go right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Release her hands. Release her hands. Hold me. Hold me. I command that madness. How can a lady like this be mad for God's sake? I command that spirit. They must leave you right now. In the name of Jesus, I set you free by the spirit of the Christ. Jesus, for your mercy, for your glory. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. This lady is not just mad. This was supposed to be an initiation. Hold on, please. This is a serious issue. This is supposed to be an initiation into the occult. This is not just mad, like occult, fly. This is occult an occultic thing it's not just madness and you if they don't pray you don't listen you are small but god will help you eh? don't be angry you have to leave your bad friends you hear me if not soon now you start taking a uh, what's that thing that cough syrup huh you hear what i'm saying yes sir huh yes sir please don't be embarrassed we're not we're not here to embarrass people you get what i'm saying we're not here to embarrass people I have to pray for you. What do you do? Um, I'm bad being in Sokoto. Eh? I'm staying with my elbow at in Sokoto. No, that's not what you are doing. Hold no. on. Why am I seeing a clipper? I'm bad being in Sokoto. You say you are staying with your brother. I'm seeing a clipper. Come. You two, two of you, God needs to help you. You are a good boy, but there, there's bad influence around your life. God even needs to visit your brother in Sokoto. Eh? You believe what I'm telling yes, you? Sir. You came from Sokoto? Yes, sir. All the way? Yes, sir. This one, where did he come from? He's staying with my mom here. He's staying with your mom? Is your mom here? No, sir. She's not here. I have to pray for you. Huh? Um, when, I'm, when I make the altar call, I'll make the altar call. Once you just hear the altar call, just run and come out. Hmm? It's time to be very serious. Jesus Christ will help you. You're a great person. Huh? You are a great person. You don't have any business doing what you are doing now. What took you to Sokoto? I went to school. Are you a student? No, sir. I have not gotten to admission yet. Your school is not Sokoto. Come back. Don't think somebody will manipulate you and do wrongs for you to get this and that because what you want to do is not very good. Eh? It's not a godly thing you want to do to get admission. Let's do things correctly. Huh? What do you want to study? Computer science. This is not computer science. I'm seeing IT. Something that has to do with, with IT. And God will bless you, but you need to settle down. 
because the way you are desperate for admission now, you can you do everything. Have you written jam? Um, you are writing jam on Tuesday. Huh? Tuesday. Well, I won't say it here. Be careful. Just be careful. You hear what I'm saying, Abi? You know what I'm saying. Yes, be careful. Eh? Because you can't want God to help you and you're already doing arranging. You know what I'm saying now? All these funny things people do for jam. What is not your own is not your own. I'm not embarrassing you. The Lord will step in and the Lord will bless you. Just hold that lady and let me minister to you. Who is this? Please, if I don't... Yes, Mama, Mama, come. Please, if I don't call you, you don't come out. Mama, I want to pray for you. You do business. Because you are supposed to do... There is business that God has been putting in your heart. Huh? Is that true? God, I see you do business. What you are getting from civil service is not enough to take care of you. And God wants to open a door for you. A business door. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to pray for you because God wants to really give you prosperity this year. Okay, thank you. Regina, Regina. I hear a name, Regina. Regina, Lord, in the name of Jesus, step into our mother's life. Do a miracle for her right now in the name of Jesus. I hear a name, Regina. Regina. Please, who is that? Do we have anybody? Outside. Regina. You are outside. There's nobody. We just move to the next case. You are Regina. Come, what do you do? I'm a saloonist. You are a saloonist. I need to pray. Bad luck. God wants to take away bad luck from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's marriage was cancelled. Come out, please. Your marriage. Who is that? No, not you. Somebody's marriage. I'll pray for you. Don't worry. You were supposed to. You've even started the arrangement. They just cancelled it like this, and your heart is pain. Please come out. I want to pray for you. Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit is giving us grace. You are Regina. In the name of Jesus, God is giving you favor. Please don't sit back. This is a serious issue. In the name of Jesus, I lay hands on you. Please go back. I don't have to speak over your life. Once I lay hands on you, what do you do? I just graduated. Eh? Graduated from school. You just graduated. I have to pray for you because you love God. Who is supposed to? They've started your marriage planning. Please come, my sister. I, I don't mean to embarrass you. You get what I'm saying? It's to speak over your life. You two, what category are you here for? Huh? Regina, okay, I'll pray for you. Who has sickle cell? There's a sickler here now. You are the one. Please indicate, eh, sweetheart. Come. Hold my hands. Look at me. Father, please do a miracle for this lady. You have changed several genotypes in this place. Change her genotype right now. In the name of Jesus. From SS to AA. Do it for her in the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, let me pr please. Um, are you based in Zaria here? Are you part of our prayer department? Yes, sir. Please be serious eh? and pray because uh, it's not just prayer department. After Koinonia, you can meet the media and listen to the messages. They will help you. You love Jesus, but your mindset is still very serious and you can do anything, especially men. So please, you will listen to that message and the Lord will help you. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, come. I don't know what happened. I don't want to ask you. Please don't feel embarrassed. Huh? When do you want to settle down? It was supposed to be December last year. It was supposed to be December last year. What happened? You called me and said I should forget about everything. The guy called you and just told you he's not doing again. Yes, sir. Did he give you a reason why? No reason. Okay, let me tell you. Weep not. God saved you from heartache. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please. See, let me tell you, 
if you don't have the eyes of the spirit you will be fighting god not knowing are we together now i'm sorry to say don't feel bad don't feel embarrassed you see that guy it was three of you you are not the only one you have been sensing that there's another lady the other lady promised to do him something if he doesn't leave you that's why what he quietly called out of fear and all of that that he's, he may be a sincere person but him and women is even a spirit he needs help let me pray for you that God will bring the man he has destined you're a very nice lady father in the name of Jesus Christ I lay my hands upon her father send into her life the man a, a responsible and God fearing man in the name of Jesus Christ and for your shame may my God give you double in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen let me just talk to two people and then we'll, madam please come that woman can I talk to you please clear the way for her madam please come please let's pray go ahead and pray pray in the spirit say father visit me madam please look at me I have to pray for you something is tying your finances down completely yes sir. that's the major reason why you came yes sir. is that true yes, you were asking the lord to visit your finances yes, because everybody will see you now and think things are just working but the truth is nothing is really working yes, sir. you need a serious miracle in that area that's true, sir. is that true yes sir. are you married yes but now i'm out of hold on place. don't worry you just answer you don't have to embarrass yourself because there is a spirit huh this spirit brings bad luck on your life People come to you and then in a few weeks or months, they will now fight you. This is still what happened in your marriage. It's true, sir. Because the man has gone. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, is that true? Are you in your yes, husband's house now? No, sir. You are not in your husband's house. The Lord is bringing a miracle for you. Amen. What do you do? I'm a hairdresser. Your hairdresser. Do you believe in tithing? Yes, sir. You tithe? Don't feel embarrassed. This is the one thing the devourer is marching in and out of your life because tithing is not in place. Please believe it. It's not a gimmick by men of God. Is she your friend? Because I'm seeing light from you to her. You know her. Eh? Why have you not been talking to her about tithing? Even last week you discussed with her. No, 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 don't feel bad. Madam, please, look at me. Tithing is not a gimmick by men of God. Believe me. You understand what I'm saying? It's the access points the devil is using. Where is your husband, the man now? He's at home now. I will discuss with you, eh, madam. This is not something we will say in public. It's a very serious mm -hmm. issue. But I need to pray for you. But for now, I need to pray for you. There is bad luck. And we need to pray against it. Please don't feel bad. God is about to change your life. Please hold my hands. In the name of Jesus. I command that spirit. You see, there is a spirit that is making this thing happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go. Release her right now. That spirit leaves you. Madam, go and prosper. You will prosper in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Um, there's a baby that is sick. I have to pray for that baby. I'm seeing a baby that is very sick. Very small baby. Sick. Your child? Is she sick? Yes, sir. What's wrong with her? She's having difficulties in breathing. Difficulty in breathing. Difficulty in breathing. How old is the baby? It's five months. Five months. This is not the only baby. There's another one. Come, come. I'll pray with you. What did the doctors tell you about the baby? Syndrome. They said it's what? That is Down syndrome patient. Down syndrome? Yes, sir. We soon need 
Doctor. Ah, you are a doctor now. Down syndrome. At least I know, I don't know what causes it, but I know how it does. Please come, come, come and talk to us. Give us some little education. Let's cast it. Um, it's a congenital disorder. And the difficulty in breathing is most likely coming from a congenital heart disease. It mostly manifests with congenital heart disease. Then there are other um, manifestations too. From the fishy, you can um, see some of the manifestations also. I don't know what you said, but all well, I know. <laughs> most likely, the difficulty in breathing is coming from a congenital heart disease. We're going to pray. This, this baby... believe that this child ah, God do a miracle in the name of Jesus Hold him. am I holding him right Jesus Christ Father by the blood of Jesus do a miracle in this child we change this situation in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be a miracle in Jesus name I'm seeing one more child. Though. Who is that? Please come. Please hold the child. You are the one who needs the healing first. Just hold the child. I hope the child will not cry. I have to pray for you. Huh? Something is really fighting you. Huh? This is witchcraft. Let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command you, you know my voice. In the name of Jesus, she's been translated from the kingdom of darkness into light. And you must let her go. I'm seeing this lady in the realm of the spirit like a tree. That is, is refused from moving. Hold my hands. You must be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those dreams, those oppressions, I come against them in Jesus' name. Let's pray for the baby. What's wrong with the baby? She has been coughing and stooling. Coughing and stooling. Baby, how are you? In the name of Jesus Christ, we speak to you. No more coughing. In the name of Jesus Christ, perfection in your body. I release the power of the Holy Spirit upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, the power flows through this baby. Jesus name. I hope the usher help her out because I'm sensing this anointing even on her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Baby we take away everything that is not of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. Where is the man in your life? One of the ushers. Okay. I'll pray with you. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing something that is serious but I'll talk, I'll talk about it. Okay. The Lord is showing me something that is quite serious. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. There are 13 people here. There is a strong influence of confusion and stagnation. Please listen. 13 people here right now inside and outside i'm going to pray for you right now wherever you are as i begin to pray it's like fire it will come upon you confusion stagnation at least 13 people i see in the spirit please lift your hands don't say anything just lift your hands i'll do the pray let's just flow the way the holy spirit is praying. lord jesus i'm praying right now by the ministry of angels 13 people by the influence of the spirit I stand under this apostolic anointing and I pray right now wherever you are inside and outside right now as I pray that fire starts coming upon them right now right now bring them out 13 people 13 people by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
I end it right now. There are still people outside, inside, that take people by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Bring them out, please. Right to the back. Right to the back. Right to the back. Right to the back. I'm seeing fire. It's like a spirit that would jump out of you. Right to the back, inside, outside. I command that confusion outside. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is resting on people. Confusion. All the overflows. In the name of Jesus, confusion must come to an end right now. Delay. Lift your hands. I tell you, there will be a mighty baptism outside. Outside, at the count of three, I want you to shout, Jesus. When you shout it, I see altars on fire. Are you ready now? Outside, one, two, three. Bring them, bring them. Fire is falling outside. The Bible says, while men slept, hear me. There are things that tie the destinies of men. Jesus already paid the price. That's why we are doing what we are doing. The authority is that of Jesus Christ. Bring them in. Now listen. Listen, my goodness. You are going to lift your hands for your family. I see the angels of the Lord bringing deliverance for families. Listen, at the count of three, I tell you wherever you are, I like you to shout Jesus with all your heart. Some of you, you are representing an altar of God for your family. And the moment you do that, in the name of Jesus, there will be a miracle. One, Father for families, let the soul of the spirit go from the north to the south, east and the west of every family. Right now at the count of three. One, two, three. Jesus! Families, 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 the sword of judgment. listen i came out because your destiny must open up lift your hands i came out to bring the atmosphere of god's presence hear me there is no one here whose destiny has been tied that that spirit will remain i'm going to, listen i'm going to begin to walk around my goodness i see angels by my left and right as i begin to move across this place the fire of god will start falling right now i stand under this apostolic office and i declare my hands right now right now right now i command us right now right now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus fire 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 every spirit every devil 
from my left, my right, outside, outside, my left, my right. Every devil, right now, I stretch my hands. Every spirit, go, 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 go. I command every spirit right now. Release them. Release them right now. Release them. Release them. Hallelujah. 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 Those of you here, lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm going to shout Jesus just two times. And I see like a tornado. It's like the spirit will start moving right to the back. That's what the Lord is saying. I should shout. There are spirits, time men. It's your time to go now. Jesus, get ready now. Get ready now. Jesus, go, go, go out. Out right now. My left and my right. I release spirit. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Those spirits, I command them to leave. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Out, 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 out. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I command right now, right now, I stretch my hands towards you. Every force tying you down. In the name of Jesus, it must release you right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Those of you outside don't think you are missing anything at all that's why i came out i'm going to all the overflows those of us here you may be outside but let me tell you something god will step into your destiny please lift your hands because i'm seeing chains from where this camera is right to the end i'm seeing chains lift your hands i want you to shout jesus just once at the count of three and everybody under that influence must go right now please be careful with anybody close to you so that you don't stampede them father i chains of bondage but you organize this meeting to recover destinies therefore at the count of three it will come like fire on some of you one two three right now right now right now right now right now right now i cast that spirit i cast that spirit i cast that spirit let her go right now in the name of Jesus 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 the Lord is giving you a new song a new song the Lord is wiping your tears you on green lift your hands take it now receive right now by the power of the Holy Ghost Mama, the Lord is saying I should tell you he's wiping your tears. God is wiping your tears. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is saying what you could not do in five years. You, Mama, in five years, he's making to happen for you in one year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sir, I have to pray. There's delay in your life. The Lord wants me to break the spirit of delay. I hope you are not embarrassed, sir. No, no. Hold my hand, sir. Something will happen to you remarkably right now. Take it! That devil of delay. Out of his life right now. Out! Out! I don't know who this man is, but he's stepping into a new level. God is wiping the spirit of delay. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing in the spirit the name Eboi, Eboi State. Someone here from a boy state, God is bringing a miracle at my back. That person is at my back. A boy state, God is bringing a miracle wherever that person is. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is Margaret? Margaret, I'm hearing the name Margaret. You are in this place. Oh, no, 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 no. There's a lady here, Margaret. I'm seeing the Lord is shining. Who is that? Come, Margaret. You are Margaret. Look at me. 
the Lord is wiping the tears of your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that spirit to leave your family right now. I see a family of five ladies. None is married. A family of five ladies. The Lord is showing me five ladies. None is married. None is married. He's on the wheelchair. How long have you been? Seven years. Sir. Seven years. What happened to you? I was shot. Accidentally shot. You were shot? I'm a military personnel. Oh, you're a military personnel? Yes, sir. And you've had to leave the army because of it? Or you are still there? I'm still in the service. But then you need to walk? Yes, sir. Wow. You can't feel? No, I cannot feel. You can't feel this leg right now? Spinal cord injury. Oh, it's a spinal cord. A lumbar problem. Yes, sir. I'll pray with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a family of five ladies. Please. I have to talk. Five ladies. None of them is married. Five ladies. None is married. No one among them is married. God needs to do a miracle. Please make sure that we confirm the situation. Five ladies. So that we don't say yes. we are faking it. Please make sure. Yes, yes. Five ladies, yes, where are you from? Yes, I'm from Edo State. You are from Edo State? Yes, yes. You two? Five, you two? You are together? Oh, you are his sister? No. You are his friend? So why are you here with him? To back him up? Oh, five ladies, yes. Okay. Okay, I'm going to pray for you right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit. There is a spirit that brings delay in your family. And I take authority over that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right now. There's somebody around here. You are into book selling. Bookstore business. God wants to increase somebody's bookstore business. Here. I'm sensing it. I don't know if there's anybody here. You are into selling of books. The Lord is saying prophesy increase to that person. Jordan is you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Jordan. You step into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Ah, but you are not related to him. You just came out. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for the people here. I hope they can hear me. Hallelujah. There's somebody I need to pray for here. Call that lady. Call that lady. You. Don't think distance is a barrier. Believe me. God can fish you out from anywhere. Look at me. I know you are standing by the fence, but God is wiping your tears. He's giving you a new song. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release that anointing upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. God has answered your prayer. You are praying that I minister to you. You and your friend. Where is your friend? Where is he? Lift up your hands, two of you. You will step into an anointing. Huh? Hold your hands together. In the name of Jesus. Look, I stretch my hands. Right now, let a fire come upon both of you. Right now, right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You step into a strange dimension. Let me talk to the people here. I want everybody to be able to know that when you come for this meeting, it doesn't matter where you are. God can visit you. No, don't worry, just, just leave the person. Grace. I hear a name, Grace. 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 There's someone with the name Grace. Is there someone like that? Grace. Grace. I need to pray for Grace. 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 And I'm hearing Garba. Garba. I'm hearing a name, Garba. God is ministering to somebody, I don't know if it's a son name or a name, Garba. In the name of Jesus, Garba, where are you? Your name is Garba? Your son name is Garba. Where is your dad? He's outside, he's in Saudi Arabia. He's, a, he's, he's in Saudi Arabia. Because I'm seeing God is saying, look at me. God is saying, I should tell you that there's going to be increase for your family. Okay. And so, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. You have to be very serious with me. You are going to be very wealthy. You are going into oil and gas. Amen. Are you hearing me? I don't know you. I don't know anything about you. But I'm 
seeing that you are going into oil and gas, and God is going to honor you. God will bring a man into your life. Bless you. I'm seeing three people here. You are writing jam next week. Jam. No, no, not everybody. Hold on, hold on. Just relax. I'm going to pray for everybody. Here, where I'm standing, you are writing jam. Three people. You are writing jam. Somebody is writing it for the fourth time. That person, you are the one. This will be the last time. Do you know me? Come, come and stand. What, please remind me in case I forget. This jam thing, we have to settle it once and for all. Please. People who are writing this thing again and again. I curse that spirit. This overflow, these ones looking at me. Please lift your hands. Not these ones. Those ones, exactly. Please lift your hands. Please don't think that because of the distance, all right, God cannot touch you. There is a reason why I'm coming out with this because sometimes inside is just a fraction of those outside and I want you to feel a sense of belonging to know that God is able to visit you and to minister to you. Hallelujah. Those outside, here, there are at least two of you. Fire is coming upon you right now. I see the power of darkness being broken. Lord, where are they? Right now, I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stand upon this anointing. Wherever they are, Father, there is a lady right now. It's like fire is coming upon you. Right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that fire is coming upon you. All of you standing here, I prophesy to you. In the name that is above all names, hear me. Whatever has tied your progress, I'm talking to those here. I stand under this anointing and I declare a change of story right now. Benway State, there's someone here from Benway. Benway. Um, Benway State. You have an elder brother. Please make sure that you don't come out. We are not faking this thing. Please. You have an elder brother. Where? God is visiting your family. Visiting your family in strange ways. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that if you seek him with all your heart, he will surprise you. I hear what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm seeing a lot of families here under financial stagnation. And the Lord is saying, release them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, listen, listen. Please believe what I'm saying. Don't come and waste your time. God brought you here to wipe your tears. Any family here, you have tried and tried and tried. Doors have refused to open. I open it for you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see somebody here. You are looking for a job. June. Um, you are looking for a job in Abuja by June. I see a job coming. This is what God is saying. I don't know who I'm speaking, but God is meaning somebody. Your name is Grace. Where is your mother? Kogi State. I need to pray for you because there's wisdom. I take authority over that spirit. Of Jesus. I need to pray for somebody, two of you. I want you to follow me. You smoke this thing. Um, what's the name of that? It's not just stab out. Weed. Please, don't be embarrassed. Two of you, you really smoke it. You love the Lord, but this thing is a challenge. Please follow me. Your deliverance has come. You smoke weed. Your own is not just uh, all that cigarette. Please, don't be embarrassed. Follow me and I'll, I'll pray for you. And brother here, listen. listen, God is speaking to you. You came for koinonia, but you left a lady in your room. You left a lady in your room. You told her you are coming for koinonia and you will come back. Please, don't destroy yourself and destroy that lady because your going back now is to get that lady pregnant and you'll be in trouble. God is saving you. Send her a text now to go home. You are born again. One, once I make altar call, wherever you are, please march to the front. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
the power of God is coming on some ladies here. I've seen in some at least three ladies severe menstrual pain. This is not this is something that for one of you is in your family. Lift your hands, please. Just here, this region. Right now, the fire of God is going to come on some ladies. I take authority over that spirit. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right now. Right now. I curse that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady will feel like fire on her stomach right now. It will come upon you like fire. I take authority over it. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And there is a lady that the Lord is showing me. For four months, you have not seen your period. Four months, you have not seen your period. I think you need to talk to your friend to help you because before the end of this meeting is returning. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see someone's family um, like relative in prison. There's somebody here like that in prison. One of your relatives. I don't know if it's in a police station or prison, something like that. God is doing a miracle. Who is that? There's somebody like that. You're the one. Come. Who is in prison? Your nephew. Are you sure? Which prison? Is in Gobe State. How long is his tenure? Five years. Five years. How many years has he done? One. One year. We are going to pray for mercy. You will not reach five years. We are going to bring him out. You believe that? Lift your hands for him. And let the name of Jesus step in and give him the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your hands, my dear. Look at me. I'm seeing a crown being put on your head. You, this. Are you hearing me? God is bringing you into a new dimension of grace. Father, I stretch my hands to her right now. Right now. That fire comes upon you right now. In the name of Jesus. Let me talk to the lady with the pink cap. You, lift your hands. Beauty for ashes. That's what God is saying is bringing. Beauty for ashes. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is bringing a restoration to your family. Your family is experiencing a restoration. In the name of Jesus. Joseph. Joseph, I hear you. Joseph. Joseph, you are wearing a short dress. Joseph is wearing a short dress. Joseph. I'll pray for you, but the Joseph is inside the house here. Who is that? Come out. Your name is Joseph. I will pray for you. God wants to lift you. Lift your hands. Something will come on you. You are a student. You are a copper. God is wiping you. In the name of Jesus Christ, a new dimension of grace. You are Joseph. Look at me. What are you studying? Are you a student? So you are done with German. What you want to study? I think engineering. Agri. You are going to be a businessman, and God is going to honor you in the name of Jesus. Joseph John, where is he? Come. Why did you stop doing business? There's an anointing for you. Go back, and the Lord will honor you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come. Where is your mother? Where is the village? The Lord is saying, I should tell you, the way he would lift you, all those who know you will be surprised. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord would lift you. Eh? Because I'm seeing your story similar to that of Esther in the Bible. Go and read the story of Esther. How that God can pick somebody who is supposedly nothing. Someone's sister here is barren. Who is that person? Barren. The Lord is saying it's time for the child. I will praise you. Not you or your sister. And I will your sister praise is barren. How many years? Six years. You follow me. How, how many years? I will Eleven years. Two of you come. The Lord is responding. You too. Please follow me. Madam. Look at me. Confusion is ending in your life. Come. 
come the lord is bringing an end to confusion in the name of jesus christ please everyone lift your voice and pray and say father you are changing my story there is a habit god is setting you free from it's a terrible habit right now be free it's not a habit you should practice at all god is setting you free from it somebody here has eye problem no 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 not eye. i'm waiting for you there's somebody here with eye problem your eye pains you if you see light who is that person You get discouraged easily. God is saying that you should be discouraged. Who is the person, please? Lay your hands on your hands. In the name of Jesus. No more denials. Let's go. Those things, please follow me. The Lord is bringing me to a new dimension. I'm on my way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord wants to release certain kinds of miracles right now. Who are all these people following me, please? Hold on. The Lord wants to release fruitfulness. Please be sensitive, everybody, inside and outside. He's using children as a point of contact, but this will affect every other area's life. Every other body's. Um, how many years? Six. Six years. Your sister, yes. where is she? She's in Zara. How about you? 11 years. Oh my God. My auntie. 11 years? Ah. Why didn't they come for the miracle service? She's in Abuja. No, 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 no. Please, don't, don't just come out carelessly. Please, please. Okay, come out. The Lord is asking me to let you come out. Please. I'm going to pray for the sick, but barrenness issue. Let's deal with it right now. Tonight, I want God to step into people's lives. I think you should honor what Jesus is doing in this place. Look at the number of issues. Believe me, when I tell you there will be testimonies. If you are standing here for yourself, just move this way. If you're standing for yourself, move this way, please, so that I know. Please, just move here. I will worship him forever, love him forever, because this is God is to do. Please, this way, just let there be a separation. My, my brothers and sisters, please see how many people the devil is tying down. The Lord is bringing you into an anointing. It's a healing anointing that is coming on you. I see an angel of the Lord pouring like oil upon your head. You, you looking at me. Something is being activated in your spirit, man. Step into that oil, that fountain. It's that healing anointing. Koinonia, please, I want you to know that this is a platform that God has created to wipe the tears of men. As we gather there every week, God is doing something. Please be patient with God tonight and let him do something in your life. Because I have to pray for the sick. I'm only going to lay hands on those who are standing here for themselves because I want them to return with the testimony. But for all of us who are connecting for other people, you, lift your hands. You out right now, right now. It's a curse upon the family. You are going by the spirit of the living God. Right now, you are a devil of darkness. I see you in the spirit, 
and there must be that release right now please those of us here talk to the Lord on behalf of your loved ones and say Lord you must change your story you must change your story those of us here I'm going to lay hands on you by it. please pray thank you Jesus all right, lift your hands, everyone, here. This category, just lift your hands, please. For time's sake, I may not be able to lay hands on you, but I want you to believe. Something is happening to you that is happening to your loved ones. You need to call them and believe. Many of you are receiving for your loved ones. My goodness, I hear the cry of children. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a miracle right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Receive it for your loved ones. Receive it right now. I open wombs, I open wombs, I open wombs. In the name of Jesus, I open wombs. I command a remembrance. A remembrance right now. In the name of Jesus. Right here, we declare miracle children. For your loved ones. Miracle children. They take in right now. And nine months after now, they give birth to their children. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please go back to your seat. God bless you. God bless you. Those who are standing here, I'm going to pray for you. Please make sure you are married. If you are not married, please don't embarrass yourself. Go back to your seat. Praise the Lord. Let me pray for those who are standing for themselves. We have to pray. That's why you came. Hallelujah. Remember the testimony that God gave a woman who had been barren for eight years. How many years? Eight solid years. And God gave her triplets. They are still alive till today. Triplets. Triplets. Please, I want you to believe God. If you are standing husband and wife, no problem. You are standing for your wife, no problem. Just make sure you are married. That's the only thing we are saying. Please. I'm going to pray for you. Stretch your hands over them and pray because we will release fruitfulness right now. In the name of Jesus. I don't care what the problem is. Jesus is stepping in. My confidence, the source of my strength, are you. the strength of my life, are you. my open, my joy, are you. Hey, my confidence. Are you. I looked around and I suddenly realized that you've been so good to me. Your mercy is everlasting, undenying, overwhelming. I tell you, celebrate God because this will end. Who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you hear my call when I call you? Who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you hear my call? The source of my strength are you. The strength of my life are you. My open, my joy are you. Hey, My confidence are you. The source of my strength are you. The strength of my life are you. My open, my joy My confidence are you. Hey, I am miracle. Madam, go and return back with your child. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let this womb be open. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus. Madam, 
you are coming back with a testimony what is there has been removed in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord wipes your tears right now in the name of Jesus where is your husband sir please stand near your wife there's a reason why the Lord is asking can you hold her hands hold on I don't care what the doctors say you are returning with your testimony The Lord is giving you a baby girl and then a baby boy. I know you want a boy, but God is giving you a baby girl first and then a boy in the name of Jesus. Make sure you come and testify. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, a miracle. A miracle. But there are still three more cases we'll deal with very fast we'll pray for this just for one minute and then I'll begin to prophesy there are people who have not yet received what they came for here please just be patient with us please this is a miracle service right so that we can justify our coming please let's rise we'll just do this in one minute I'd like you to believe stretch your hands here right now stretch your hands in one minute and let's pray in the name of Jesus Christ stretch your hands towards the prayer request and let's pray prophesy over it your request is here Lord we turn it into a testimony please make sure those outside their requests are here too if they are here to collect your request just wave it inside and outside and somebody will come and attend to you are you praying prophesy father this must become a testimony in my life. This must become a testimony in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you answer prayers in this place. Let there be miracles, oh God. Let there be breakthroughs, oh God. Supernatural miracles. By the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit, miracles upon miracles, miracles, visit everyone, visit issues of concern in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I prophesy over this request in the name that is above all names, that every request represented here no matter how impossible it is by the power that raised christ from the dead let every dead situation here come back to life in the name of jesus christ i pray by the power of the holy spirit my god we sang that you are not a man turn every captivity here Turn every captivity here in the name of Jesus. Now, I want to prophesy to us. Please lift your hands. Um, you don't have to bring them out. It will be, just give me 10 more minutes, but it's going to be extensive prophecy. Extensive prophecy. I want to speak to you because I know the things that, I see things in the spirit that have not yet been received. We have to pray in the name of Jesus. Please. I want you to believe God and lift your hands. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. The Lord is starting off with direction. There are people here who came praying, Lord, what is the next step of my destiny? Wherever you are, I'm prophesying to you. As I speak, fire will come upon you. Just on your head. Some of you will start feeling fiery sensations on your ears. The Lord is bringing direction right now. I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Right now. Right now. Supernatural direction. Help that guy. In the name of Jesus. Every confusion in your life. Those outside, make sure you participate. Someone is asking, oh God, what is the next step? I pray by this anointing, receive direction right now. 
receive direction right now in the name of Jesus someone's marital destiny is under siege right now in the name that is above all names an anointing a yoke breaker anointing I prophesy receive it right now I open those doors right now inside outside I open those doors right now Hallelujah. There's someone praying. You are asking God for money for rent. Rent. The Lord is telling me that between now and Monday morning, there is a miracle coming for you. There is a miracle coming for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are ladies who have even guys this spell of disfavor please listen in the name of jesus you will literally feel like something being wiped out of your face i see many people being affected by this lord where are they that mark of disfavor by this anointing right now right now i break that mark right now inside outside in the name of jesus I tear off that mark, Kaparataka Latosia, that mark of disfavor, that embargo of bad luck upon your life that makes things not to work. I come against it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, you have come to the end of your road. And if God does not step in, there will not be any way out. I pray for you. That door closed over your destiny that will not allow you to move to the next level. I stand under this anointing in this miracle service and I prophesy. I command that door to open right now. Oh, come on. Believe it. Believe it. I command that door to open. Shakatata. Deke poroso bariata. I command that door to open. Swing open. In the name of Jesus. Whatever has been earmarked from heaven to enter your hand. And is yet to enter your hand. Please stretch your hands towards me. Shalakataya. In the name that is above all names. I stretch my hands back. Receive it right now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it right now. Everything. That must enter your hand inside and outside I command it from the realm of the spirit I deliver it to your hands in the name of Jesus hallelujah everything that has refused to grow in your hand ideas businesses please listen everything that has refused to grow in the name that is above all names return and cause it to grow return and cause it to grow I command that business grow I command your family grow I command your finances grow I command your ministry grow Hallelujah. I pray for you. You hear me pray this all the time. Because I've seen what it can do in the life of a man. Where are your destiny helpers? If there is one prayer you must receive in this place. Listen. God can use men to help a man. And in one day, God can bring the right people to wipe your tears. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God where you have struggled and struggled with no hope of help as you lift your hands let an anointing from heaven land upon your life and call help us right now right now right now i release that anointing upon you for help for help for help for help take it receive it the anointing 
Listen. All you need in your life, one person can just tell you do A, B, C. Or I know A who can do B for you. And it can open you up to a whole new world. One more time I pray. I call them. From the north, the south. If they are in Zaria here, we call them. If they are in Kaduna State, we call them. Any part of Nigeria, receive their ministry now. Receive their ministry now. Whoever has vowed to destroy your life, I'm praying. Oh, this is judgment. In the name that is above all names. If there is any human entity standing there, I declare, let this night be a night of judgment. Let this night be a night of judgment. Let this night be a night of judgment. Listen, when Pharaoh refused to allow Egypt, Israel go, God took his firstborn. Whatever must be taken from your enemy to let you go, we take it tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hear me? Let me tell you the truth. There are men that hold the destinies of people low. I teach you principles of success. But I'm spiritual enough to know a man's destiny can be kept at a standstill. Whoever kept your destiny at a standstill, in the name that is above all names, I put an anointing upon you. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. In the name of Jesus, go forward. I prophesy in your career. Go forward. In every area of your life. Hallelujah. Let me speak over our finances. You see what is happening around the nation. Father, we believe in the power to prosper. And we believe in favor. Ah, there is such a thing, my brother and my sister, called favor. Lift your hands. My God and my King. That anointing for favor that was on Joseph. That anointing that made five loaves and two fish. To feed 5,000 people. Wherever you are. May that anointing come on your life right now. It's coming on people. May that anointing come upon you. It comes upon you right now. Hallelujah. Some of us are moving. But our pace is too slow. That's the truth. We need acceleration. We are moving, but your pace is too slow. There are things you should do in two weeks, not three years. There are things you should do in one day. I'm praying for you. The Bible says, and the hand of God came upon Elijah. And he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. The anointing that must come upon you, that between now and next month miracle service, what has not happened from when koinonia started may the god that i serve release it into your life i command speed 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 i prophesy it speed hallelujah all those writing jam lift your hands it's time for you to move forward if you are not writing you can stand in for somebody maybe your loved ones or whatever in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, and when they were tested in all matters of wisdom, hear me, Daniel was found ten times better. That ten times better unction. As you write your jam, may the angel of wisdom cause you to pass this jam in the name of Jesus. There are people who suffer and read and sit there in front of that computer and don't know what to do. You will know what to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm led to pray for those in final year. 
I don't know why, but the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. We need to release you. There are things that have come up. Some of us, physically speaking, is obvious there is trouble. Where is that God who can correct a man's mistake? I pray for you. In the name that is above all names, you will graduate this year. I said you will graduate this year. I don't know how it will happen, but you must graduate this year. Hallelujah. The secret, receive this, two more and we are done. The secret, the ideas, the strategy you need for the next level of your life. I'm praying for you. Please lift your hands. There will be a strong impartation. God is releasing anointings for creativity. Some of you, it will come upon you, you will not know why. But when you sleep, you will see it in dreams. My God, I'm praying. I see this thing falling on at least 40 people. In the name that is above all names. That anointing for creativity. Receive it right now. Right now, right now, right now. An impartation. An impartation. An impartation. An impartation. Inside, outside, inside, outside. Take it. Take it. Take it. Creativity. Ideas. I send them from the spirit. Concept. Right now, right now. Business ideas. Career ideas. Hallelujah. Malapo Sodo Baradaba. Now, I'm going to pray the last prayer. Breakthrough. You don't know what breakthrough is, some of you. Let me tell you what breakthrough is. Breakthrough is when the barrier standing between you and the next level is not lifted, destroyed. If it's lifted, it can appear in your future. Please listen. Some of us, what you need is breakthrough. You don't even know the name of the situation you are in. But I pray. At the count of three, I want everybody to just shout breakthrough as loud as you can and something remarkable will happen i'm seeing rain falling that's what i'm saying father this is the instruction you gave me as we shout hey, yeah, 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 yeah. somebody's husband husband somebody's husband is receiving breakthrough somebody's husband husband at the count of three one two three yes lord receive it receive it Receive it. Malakata Baba. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. I smash those barriers. Breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. Breakthrough. I mark you with an anointing that anywhere they see you, they will be compelled to bless you. Listen to what I'm saying. I mark you with an unction. I mark you with a mystery. And I command that anywhere they see you, may they bless you. Anywhere you enter, may this anointing force men to bless you. Anywhere you travel to, may this anointing distinguish you. Isaac blessed his son and said, the smell of my son is like the field. Brothers and sisters, hear me. There is a fragrance that can come upon a man that will force men to bless you anyhow. I don't know who must appear to bless you. But I'm saying it again. In the name of Jesus, I mark you with a mystery that forces men to bless you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting.
Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kata Branda Kata Bakotos Koto Brekateka Nekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.